It is homecoming Saturday at Kid Brewer Stadium. One of the best atmospheres in all of college football. And the Mountaineers home on a Saturday for the first time in a while. Sean Clark about to lead the Mountaineers of Appalachian State to battle in a key Sunbelt Conference game against the Warhawks of Louisiana Monroe. A pleasant good afternoon to you, David Jackson, alongside Avery Hall. We are glad you are with us for this Sunbelt Conference matchup. Avery, two of the hottest teams in the league battling each other today. I tell you, it's going to make for a great football game, Dave Jackson. you got two uh, football teams coming off big wins. Uh, in, in ULM coming off the win over South Alabama. And then you got Appalachian coming off the win over Coastal Carolina. Should make for a great football game. Collection of great signal callers in this battle. We'll start first with ULM's Chandler Rogers getting more comfortable every snap he takes, coming off of a fantastic performance against South Alabama, 369 yards, four touchdowns. 369 yards and four touchdowns. He's thrown for over, over 1,000 yards already, uh, run, rush for over 300 yards. Dave Jackson, he can beat you with his feet. He can beat you with his arm. He's the real deal and having a lot of success. On the flip side, App State's Chase Bryce, 347 yards, two touchdowns in the air in the upset win over then 14th ranked Coastal Carolina. Carolina. Bryce is another one that's getting some confidence here at the midpoint of the season. Getting some confidence, making great decisions with his read progression. Again, he even ran the football very well against Coastal Carolina, which opened up the deep ball. He allowed him to take the top off of Coastal's defense. So great job by Chase. Legendary family, the Bowdens. Terry on the field here today coaching ULM against App State. Sean Clark getting set for a great Sunbelt conference battle between ULM and App State from homecoming Saturday at The Rock in Boone. Welcome back inside The Rock, Kid Brewer Stadium here in Boone, North Carolina. David Jackson, Avery Hall with you here on this Sunbelt Saturday. It's been a while since the Mountaineers have been here and the fans, boy, they have turned out here again today. One of the most ruckus atmospheres in college football. Avery Hall, you and I have seen several games in this stadium. Go back to that Wednesday game against Coastal Carolina. Uh, you think that's got to be one of the top five atmospheres ever in here, and they're packed in on a rainy 48-degree day here again today. Dave Jackson, I think last Wednesday was the most electric type football environment that, that, that I've seen at Appalachian. Of course, played in front of 25, 26,000 as a player. Also been a part of some big ball games in the FCS playoffs. But last Wednesday was a very electric environment here in the high country. Out of 130 FBS teams, App State leads them all in percent capacity. 31,604. That big number last week. ULM won the toss. They elected to first. So we'll see Callum Sutherland, the senior out of Keller, Texas, kick things off. Left to right across your device of choice. We are glad you've tuned in this Sunbelt Conference game. The Raging Cajuns already a winner in league play today. ULM playing a little chase on the west side, but they're thinking about postseason and championship chases. Terry Bowden's got some juice within that Warhawk program. We'll see how they handle a road test today after two wins at Malone Stadium in back-to-back -back weeks. Got an App State home game on a Saturday. Chase Bryce made for these kinds of opportunities. Avery Hall, experienced, skilled player starting to bring him confidence all the way around. His game improving because of that. It, it's improving. He's got a bunch of great weapons around him. He, he, he distributed the ball well the last time out, and I surmise that he'll continue that positive momentum going forward in this ball game. Nate Noel getting the start at the running back position. It's Noel on first down across right side, shaking a tackle up to the 32-yard line, about a seven-yard pickup for Nate Noel. Will, the sophomore out of Miami, Sunbelt's leading rusher, just under 91 yards a game. That's 31st best at the FBS. He picks up five yards on first down, brings up second down and five from the App State 30-yard line. Again, I mentioned it's raw here today in Boone, North Carolina. Temperature 48 degrees. We've had a steady rain on and off throughout the afternoon. That rain should taper off as the evening wears on. Noel carries again across the 30. He's about two yards shy of the first down on this opening drive. And opening drive success is something that ULM has used to their benefit. Starts with a defensive stop here. ULM has been next to unstoppable offensively with the football in their hands these last few games. They've been pretty good on third down. And again, you want to stay ahead of the change. And that's what, wow, that's what Appalachians have been able to do. And of course, both offensive coordinators talk extensively about staying ahead ahead of the change, being very, very proficient and successful on first down so that you have an easier call on second or third down. Five-yard gain on first down 
leads to a third and short conversion for Nate Noel and the Mountaineers. App State sixth in the Sun Belt and third down conversions on the season. No score opening drive. Second set of chains for the Mountaineers in all black today. Pass to Thomas Hennigan out in the flat. He's got a man to beat as he tries to get the corner into ULM territory. Near a first down gain, call it a pickup. Actually, they'll give him the 10. First down, black and gold as Thomas Hennigan stretches the chains for the first time today. Great play call, horizontal passing game being, being developed early in this football game because, again, they want to make sure they know exactly where those safeties are so that they cannot come up and just automatically stop the run. So they want to force them into that pass game. Good play call by Coach uh, Frank Punts. First and 10, App State. Bryce with Noel in his backfield. And up the middle, the Mountaineers rush to the 40-yard line. Another positive pickup on first down of seven yards. And that was one of the things that Sean Clark, as Avery Hall alluded to a moment ago, said was a must for App State from an offensive perspective. Positive production on first down to set up second and third down and short. That opens up the offensive playbook for this App State spread attack. And, and Sean didn't mince words. He goes, if we run the football well, we can throw the football well. And that time, Appalachian was just knocking ULM off the ball. But ULM on this play returned the favor. Peoples on the carry right side. Caleb Thomas, the defensive tackle on the grab there. Thomas has been active on the interior of Zach Alley's defensive front the last two weeks. He's had 10 tackles, two sacks. He has been in the backfield, Stop Peoples for no gain on the play. So the Mountaineers with third down and a long four coming up here. I take uh, Thomas is a transfer in from UConn, and he's just been playing pretty good football. But, you know, Zach Alley, the defensive coordinator of ULM, said, look, I want those guys up front. I want them playing physical and fast all ball game. Bryce on third down, pass batted at the line of scrimmage, and the Mountaineers in decision-making territory here. Sean Clark saying the apps are going to go aggressively, and if they're on the midfield stripe and they got fourth down and three or four yards, they're going to go for it. This is a, an offense that wants to be opportunistic, and they feel like when they're on the plus side of midfield, They've got a shot, put points on the board, they're going to take it. Dave, he, not only did he say he wanted to be opportunistic and aggressive, but he also said that, you know, they want some explosive plays today. They, they, they don't feel like they've had as many explosive plays over the last few ball games and wanted to make sure they have the, the share of them today. ULM, one of the top 30 defenses on fourth down in the country. Bryce with time. He's going to scramble, trying to run for the first down himself. Not going to get it. ULM with the stand-up at the 37-yard line. Bryce needed to get to the 36, and the Warhawks get the stand on the road. Credit Jabari Johnson in on the tackle, and ULM gets a little momentum here in the first quarter. ULM gets a little momentum, but I will tell you, that was a decision that Bryce probably could have checked down and thrown out to the flats and had probably gotten that first down. But, you know, he's looking for that explosive play. Maybe he got a little greedy there and maybe, should, you know, he's looking to go his reach from deep to short, but probably should have thrown that short. And on comes Chandler Rogers, the reigning Sunbelt Player of the Week, 369 yards, 40 yards rushing, four total touchdowns against South Alabama, led his team from behind in the second half. And one of the telltale signs about this Warhawk team, maybe changing their momentum, changing their fate a little bit is when they got back down, they were able to bounce back on top once again. And that's something that veteran teams tend to show as the Mountaineers trying to get a little aggressive on a run defense to start off the contest. Three yard pickup for the Warhawks on first down. They're gonna go fast tempo, so we may not be able to talk much in between plays, but they are twins to both sides trying to stretch out this ASU defense. Obviously ASU is showing zone right now. Uh, look, look for for, uh, gosh, uh, the quarterback to look to throw underneath here because he's not going to have anything over top. Charlie Norman on that first carry. The Mountaineers aggressively on defense again. Norman gets the pass in the flat. And for the first time today, we see DeMarco Jackson with the tackle in the backfield. You know, we're, we're, we've come out, ASU has come out in zone coverage. And, and of course, in zone coverage, you really want the quarterback to make a mistake. When you're in man coverage, you're trying to force a mistake. Uh, but ASU's Definitely not trying to give them any big plays here. Rodgers looking for a wide open receiver on the sideline and overthrew him. 
Missed opportunity. Fred Lloyd Jr. was in space with nobody on him on the ULM boundary, and Rogers overthrew him. One of the things that Rich Rodriguez praised Rogers for when we talked to him earlier this week is his ability to throw on the run. A little bit too much juice on that pass. Too, too much juice, but he's a young player. He's probably excited playing in a big football game. But but again, he will settle down. I tell you, if, if he if he takes a little bit off that throw, the receiver's still running. Only the third time in eight games that ULM has failed to score on their opening drive. Thomas Hennigan with the catch on the punt. He's got an opportunity to return back out across the 25. App State football at the 27 when we come back to Kid Brewers Stadium. 10.38 to play in the opening quarter. No score here in Sunbelt play. Lots of folks dressed up as football fans here on the day before Halloween in Boone, North Carolina. David Jackson, Avery Hall back with you. Sunbelt Conference action here today. Appalachian State taking on the Warhawks of ULM. Both teams turned away on their opening drive. App State with the football just inside their own 30-yard line where they hope to get that big play machine worked out. And that was one of the differences in their win over Coastal Carolina. The Mountaineers with 10 plays of over 20 yards or more in the loss, a lopsided one at that to the Ragin' Cajuns two weeks prior. App had no plays over 20 yards and it was really kind of stuck in the mud as we see Corey Sutton with his first catch on his birthday Saturday. Happy birthday to Corey Sutton. Good catch, a good throw. Uh, not a lot of uh, opportunities there with that read progression, but uh, uh, Bryce made the best decision. You know, uh, DJ, with this defense here, you know, if you look at their program, they're in a 4-3, but really they run a 4-2-5 because they have an extra safety in there. That's another really nickel package. See Malik Williams with the touch. Can't get around the line of scrimmage. Great pursuit out of the linebacker spot. Jaquez Williams getting the start here today at the Sam linebacker position. Williams in chase mode on Malik Williams. A little Williams on Williams crime there. But Jaquez Williams, Travion Webster make up one of the best linebacking tandems in the entire league. And they kind of alternate holding on to that starting role. Webster got it last week. Heart of the defense, fifth year presence, and Jaquez Williams coming on after a great career at Wake Forest to add a little bit of senior depth into that linebacking spot. Hennigan out across the 40 yard line as the first down gain over on the ULM sideline. The Mountaineers move the change again. I tell you, what, Dave, it's going to be a track meet. Uh, today because Appalachian likes to run that pro tempo offense and, and, and make sure that they keep the defense basic, make sure they keep the, the defense off balance. And likewise, ULM wants to keep, pick up the tempo as well. So it'll be a track meet today. App State with 51 yards early on here in this first quarter, over 500 yards last week against Coastal Carolina. As Hennigan is an early target of Chase Bryce, gets the catch on the Mountaineers sideline, picks up about eight yards on first down. You know, uh, the offensive coordinator, Frank Punch, talked about, you know, making sure that they know where the safeties are. They've got three safeties on the field, and they want to kind of keep them out of the box and also keep them from, you know, going deep and taking away the explosive play. So you can see with the play calling early in this football game, Dave Jackson, he's trying to keep the secondary and the linebackers honest by using that horizontal passing game. Hennigan only had three catches over his last two weeks. He has three catches today. A little play action fake here by Bryce. Has plenty of time to throw, launching one deep Corey Sutton on the catch at the 15 yard line tackled at the 13 first down black and gold and Corey Sutton over 2,000 yards now in his Mountaineer career. I tell you what outstanding catch by Corey Sutton but even better job by the offensive line keeping pressure off of Chase Bryce giving him a little more time for the route to progress. Cam Peoples in short space across the 10 yard line like a bull in a China shop to the seven. That's five yards on first down. Frank Pont saying in talking about that offensive line development and their ability to protect. They're one of the top 10 offensive lines in the country in terms of sacks allowed. He said it's pretty simple. When they are good, we are good as an offense. We're seeing on evidence that of that. last that pass today. play, DJ, they were good. Again, <laughs> he talks about them being very good at the run game, being good at protection, being good at picking up blitzes. But that time they were pretty good at protecting Bryce and giving him more time. Because see, when you run the RPO, it's 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 not like a three-step, five-step drop where you can give the time the route time to develop. Your linemen have to give you time to develop quickly. Cam Peoples strung out to the three yard line. Mountaineers with a third down and short. They can convert here and get a fresh set of chains inside the two. 
DJ, just elaborate a little bit again. You know, you run three, five, seven step, you know, that gives your receivers to get into the route tree. RPO, you're already in the pistol formation. So, again, your offensive line, they've got to be pretty good to buy more time for your quarterback to make his reads. Third and a yard. Full house pistol. Peoples up the middle, pushing through. And that's a touchdown, black and gold. Appalachian State on the board here in the first quarter. Good job by those big guys up front. Everybody talks about Appalachian running the stretch zone play and allowing the running back to pick a hole. That's just isolation football, pounding those guys in front of you, creating a hole. Sunbelt scoring leader into pay dirt for the first time on this Saturday as the blue sky starts to break through overhead. And Chandler State nod for the PAT. Good snap. Hold on that wet turf is down. The kick up and good. Cameron Peoples finding his way in from 11 times this year from three yards out. Mountaineers down on top, 7-0. All I want for my birthday is 2,000 career receiving yards. Corey Sutton getting just that here today. Avery Hall, Chase Bryce hit him in stride and Corey Sutton has just been one of those guys. Sure hands, great offensive weapon. You know, a, a wide receiver has to have obviously speed, good body control, and, and, and just be able to run precise routes. And that was just exactly what Corey did on that. It was like a delayed slant and uh, just, just excellent route, excellent concentration and catch. Sets up the cam. People's touchdown run. Eight plays, 72 yards, 330 off the first quarter clock. Hughes kickoff away, it goes for a touchback, and ULM will try to answer. And that's one of those things that Rich Rodriguez and Terry Bowden both said that they are as in, uh, impressed with their team with as anything in these last couple of weeks is the bounce back. Had two weeks against Coastal Carolina and Georgia State, let's just say it, that wasn't very pretty against Liberty and against South Alabama. A little bit of spine from an offensive perspective of being able to deal with adversity and come back and make plays. Rich Rodriguez saying that he wants his team to be grinders out there and to play to the next play. And that's what this offense has done and they've been much more efficient for it. That's exactly what they've done. And again, they're just a resilient group of kids right now. A little fake on the handoff. Henry getting his first carry of the day. That's Andrew Henry up to the 27-yard line. Pick up a three. There's a loose ball on the field. At least App State's saying that. Mountaineers trying to say they've got possession. We'll see if that was blown dead before. You get a chance to take a look at that. You know, that's the problem sometimes with a kid like Andrew Henry who's running so hard and trying to create the additional yardage after contact. Sometimes you, you put you put it on on the turf there. And it looks like we're going to get a review here. Based on the look you just saw, I would say that it's a good thing to maybe take a take another sneak peek here. Andrew Henry, 84 yards, two touchdowns in his last two weeks. And, uh, you know, we've talked about Avery. Rich Rodriguez and Terry Bowden coming in and really having to remake an offense. 12 brand new players, nine of them brand new to the program. You've got now seven that were not in fall camp. How do you make a continuity-based offense with that little time to create? DJ, it's hard to do, but it tells you a lot about uh, Coach Bowden and, and Rich Rodriguez and Zach Alley, their coaching style and their ability to, to create culture immediately. Again, you, you talk about the, just the offensive line. If we just look at their offensive line alone, uh, DJ, they've got guys who transferred in from Illinois State, UT Martin, uh, San Jose State, Cisco Junior College, Blinn, you know, Junior College, that's quarterback coming in. And, but yet they've been able to get this group to play in a cohesive manner. Now, the offensive line was not as strong you know, at the beginning of the year, but you, you had to expect that considering those guys had not played together and built any chemistry together. But now they're coming together. But it just says a lot about the culture that Coach Biden and his, his staff, that, that they're building it at, at ULM. Here's Kyle Olson with his decision. And the Mountaineers get the recovery. Let's show the replay again. Some defenders there in traffic. And Andrew Henry on the spin move gets hit. Demetrius Taylor in there on the tackle along with Caden Smith. And recovered 
by Trey Cobb out of the bottom of the pile. Mountaineers with the ball inside the ULM 30. And that has been one of those things that ULM has been much better in. Fifth in the country in turnover margin, plus eight on the season, but it's the Mountaineers who have the first takeaway of this afternoon. Pass on the fingertips of Henry Pearson. Somehow he corrals it to get back to the line of scrimmage in a pile of defenders over on the Mountaineers sideline. Zach Woodard in on the stop. They'll call it a gain of one for Pearson. Not sure how he caught that ball to begin with. That's a tough catch. Again, that's a tough, a lot of, lot of action for two yards, but tough catch by Pearson. Great job of concentrating. Zach Woodard is all over the field today, and, and again, is in talking with Zach Alley, the defensive coordinator, he, he clearly said he's our coach on the field. He's going to make a lot of plays for the Warhawks today. Nate Noel, after having six yards per touch on the opening drive, gets his first carry of this possession and is back inside the 25-yard line to the 22. Noel, the leading rusher in Sunbelt play. Cam Peoples right on his heels at 82 yards per contest. The Mountaineers running as a team pretty efficiently this year. 184 yards of offense on the ground. That's fifth best in the league, 45th best in the country. These Sunbelt teams can run as much as they can sling it around. Third down and four for App State. Mountaineers three of four on third down here today. Noel on the carry, bouncing off tackler. is going to be a bit shy of the first down as he comes to rest at the 20-yard line. Good forward surge by ULM. So Darius Ellis amongst the tacklers. Fourth and two, Mountaineers going for it. Missed on their first fourth down opportunity. It's Noel right side, has the first down and then some tripped up to the 16-yard line. Mountaineers move the chains again. You know, that stretch zone uh, play is, is just such a key play for Appalachian. Again, two, three plays ago, they run that play, and he stretches it almost out to the sideline, right? Okay, and then the next play, they run it right at, at ULM's throat. Now then, again, he, he makes two or three steps to the outside, cuts it up, and gets the first down. That stretch play gives the running back the flexibility to pick and choose his hole, which makes it so dangerous. Mountaineers not exactly quick on the tempo. They wanted to control offensive pace here today. Able to do that after converting on fourth down. Now Bryce looking to the corner of the end zone. Malik Williams is there. He makes the catch as he inbounds. They'll say touchdown, App State. Malik Williams with the toe tap in the middle of the end zone. And we'll see if this one holds. If it does, the Mountaineers have a two score lead here in the first quarter. Wow, what, a, what an excellent, I mean, out route. I mean, you, you, he, he runs a perfect route. Bryce takes his time, delivers a good ball. Only where really, you know, it, it could have been a 50-50 ball, but because the DB had his back to him, it made it a ball catchable only by Malik Williams. Good protection up front. Good throw by Bryce. No signal yet. Kyle Olson's just waiting for it. 16-yard strike. You know, uh, Coach, So an unsportsmanlike conduct penalty after the fact that will be assessed on the kickoff, Avery. I, I didn't see what Malik did to, to create the, the, the infraction there, but it, it was obviously something Malik did uh, because, again, it was thrown right beside him. But uh, that, you know, Coach Bowden talked a lot about, DJ, about if we can stop the run, we can stop the pass. So obviously they've had a difficult time stopping the run, so it's going to be difficult stopping the pass. Staten's PAT is good. Chase Bryce, Malik Williams, that connection for the fifth time this year. Right into your living room with the second touchdown of this opening quarter. It's App State 14-0 on top of ULM at Kid Brewer Stadium here in Boone on a Sunbelt Saturday. App State on the move here in this first quarter. 14-0 on top of ULM. The Mountaineers in the end zone again. Five plays, 28 yards off the turnover. That has not been the script that the Mountaineers have followed much this year. One of the worst teams in the country in terms of turnover margin. I mean, when I say that, there's only one team in America that is worse than App State. That's Arizona at minus 10. The Mountaineers were tied for 116th in turnover margin at minus 8. But they get the turnover, turn those, or that opportunity into points in the Abs on top 14-0 as we see 
Boogie Knight for the first time on the kickoff return. You throw Boogie Knight and Bear Hunter together, and it sounds like two programs that might be promoted on True TV after the NCAA basketball tournament. <laughs> True TV or TMZ, right? But I tell you, two great football names. Boogie Knight, and he's a very productive receiver. Uh, plays slot for ULM and just does a good job of, 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 of helping this offense move the chains. Spark plug on the return team. Knight has yet to catch a pass in this contest. Chandler Rogers just one of two, only one yard passing so far here in the first corner. The turnover really kind of set ULM off their productivity from an offensive standpoint. Rogers looking to jumpstart the aerial attack, throws a pick, throws a pick on the first play to Trey Cobb, his second takeaway in as many plays for the Mountaineer defense. That's huge for Appalachian. A fumble recovery and an interception. Now, now they're playing against the Warhawks, who are normally the team that gets the turnovers. They have a plus 1.29 per game turnover margin. So again, Appalachian's on the positive side of turnovers right now. Good job of disguising that, that coverage there because, again, they were showing a little, little man to man, showing a little blitz, but then he backed up and put himself in position to make a play. Just the third interception this year thrown by Chandler Rogers, again, coming off of a beautiful performance against South Alabama where he was perfect in that regard. I think and now South ULM with their backs up against the wall again. South Alabama, he was 25 for 35, 368 yards and zero turnover. So again, not the way he wants to start the football game. 138 yards of offense thus far, another short field. Bryce looking for the home run ball again. That ball's off the pads and incomplete. Right on the goal line, an attack move by App State. Jalen Virgil trying to stretch the field. Wow, J Jalen Verger. First again, I I need to give a the big guys up front. They did a fantastic job of protecting Bryce. Great throw. I tell you what, Jalen Virgil did a great job of using his body to defend off and try and cre create separation between he and the defensive back, and just couldn't haul it in. But great route, good body control there. Fans here at Kid Brewer Stadium might have wanted a P.I. call on that. Not going to get it. That's not the way that it works necessarily. As we see Bryce attacking the flats this time. Deshaun Davis with the catch. Smooth Davis, they call him in the locker room. He picks up three yards, brings up third down and seven. Smooth Davis was probably a, a fingertip away from getting away. And that's a strong hand by number two down there. But again, pretty good, good effort to try and get yak yard after the catch. Jabari Johnson on the tackle, third down and seven. Bryce again with time in the pocket. Going to try to run for this first down. Back to the tackler, and that's not going to happen. ULM spied the running quarterback, Zach Woodard, out of the middle of that linebacking core with the stop. And App State faced with another fourth down call to make. Mountaineers one of two on fourth down today from the ULM 39. The way the defense is playing, this is a, a pretty good risk to try and go for it on fourth down when you're on the uh, UNL, ULM's 39-yard line. Again, on that last play, Bryce needs to probably throw check down, but they're going to get a they're going to get a first down. Free play here. Hit as he throws. Pearson trying to go for the football somehow wow. comes down with it inside the 10. That was a deflection by a ULM defender that came back to Pearson for the Mountaineer first down catch. Unbelievable. As, as, as we say in my hometown of Gainesville, Georgia, Pearson must be living right. Because again, that ball's tipped up. He does a fantastic job of, of just kind of keeping his eye on the play uh, and making a great, great catch there. How about Henry Pearson? The deflection made and able to haul in his sixth grab of the year for a first down right on the 10. So it's a goal to go situation for the Mountaineers. I tell you Had what. the football in his hands first and came back with it. Look at that. Good concentration by, by Pearson. Again, also, too, just good instinctive football by Appalachian. Mountaineers inches away from the goal line yet again. That's a touchdown saving tackle from Jabari Johnson, who's been active here in this first quarter. Cam Peoples again on the carry. You know, uh, uh, Pierce is going to get all the, the hype and the kudos, but again, good situational football by Appalachian. Everybody, on, all 11 guys knew to keep that play going uh, uh, when, when, when uh, the defensive end jumped off size. Just good situational football and IQ there by ASU. Mountaineers going heavy here with Caleb Sperlin in the backfield. Bryce going under center with the I formation. Maybe a hat tip to the 91 championship team here. Pass on the release, Sperlin in the end zone. Touchdown, 
App State. Three scores here in the opening quarter for the black and gold. You say three scores for Appalachian State. That's three touchdowns for the defensive end, uh, Caleb Sperlin. He's, he's been instrumental blocking for running backs, but he's also been great with his hands coming out of the backfield. Two turnovers, two touchdowns fairly immediately as well. The Mountaineers not wasting much time here today from a attack mode standpoint here offensively. PAT attempt by Staten right through the pipes. Mountaineers just shy of 200 yards of total offense. How about Caleb Sperlin? Wide open for the touchdown catch. Mountaineers lead it 21 to the Rock here at the Rock. App State, ULM, and Sunbelt Conference play in Avery Hall. When you've got a, a team offensively that's taking advantage of turnovers like App State is, you're able to build momentum that's hard to grab back if you're ULM, a team that's been using that same fuel to their fire the last two weeks. Well, well, not only is it a turnover that hurts your football team, you're giving the opponent an extra possession to go down and score points. And then also, too, you're talking about the psyche of a ULM team. Now, they've been confident over the last couple ball games, but they're still a relatively young football team. So, again, they, they are going to stay resilient, resilient. They will play for four quarters, but it has to has to hurt the psyche when you when you turn the football over and Appalachian capitalize on, capitalizes on it. Sean Clark said this week to his football team, he said, don't take the cheese that you're coming off this Coastal Carolina win. People are going to pat you on the back. Don't let it get inside your head and quell your hunger. And they have come out the hungry football team here today. And think about this, DJ. You know, in 2017, the last time ULM won, 52-45, we, you know, Appalachian was a 9-4 and four football team, 7-1 and one in the conference, won the conference title, but they lost to the Warhawks uh, in, a, in a shootout, 52-45. That was a good football team that only had lost to Georgia, Wake Forest, and I think uh, uh, I want to say uh, Georgia Southern or something. But 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 coach said don't take the cheese, and he was able to give them empirical data showing where an Appalachian team did take the cheese. Yeah, how about Sean Clark getting ready to welcome back in a team from his home state, the Marshall Thundering Herd, announcing Friday that they're headed to the Sun Belt along with Southern Miss and ODU and. Sean Clark saying just a few weeks ago when Marshall came in here for that great one possession football game here at Kid Brewer Stadium on a Thursday night, he said, we'd love to see Marshall back in the league again. And now the West Virginia native gets his wish. Chandler Rogers trying to take matters into his own hands, get that ULM offense going. They haven't been across midfield yet. Rogers with about three yards on first down as ULM tries to get an offensive machine going that has been kind of a tale of two weeks. They're at only averaging about 300 yards a game over the last two weeks. 455 yards total, 163 on the ground, almost 300 in the air as Rodgers takes off again as an open alleyway. First down gain for the Warhawks up to the 40-yard line. Rodgers has some of the best feet in the conference from a quarterbacking perspective. He, he's their second leading rusher uh, with 300 yards rushing on the season. This is just brilliance by Coach Rich Rodriguez because what they, these are these are determined quarterback runs and what he's trying to do is get him back into the flow of the football game because of the mistakes he's made with the interception on that last throwing play. Andrew Henry after the fumble with the carry up the middle of the App State defense picks up two yards on the play. Tommy Dawkins Jr. in on the tackle. Speaking of a lot of football alumni back, of course, Tommy Sr. played defensive end at App State, played with the Steelers for a while in the NFL. Second down and eight. Pass play and lots of contact, but no flag coming in intended for Jevin Fritz down on the sideline brings up third down. ASU did a good job of putting pressure on Chandler Rogers. They not only blitz uh, brought the front three for pressure, but they also brought two guys from the second level and just good good coverage on on the sideline by Cone using and leveraging the sideline as a defender to kind of uh, break up that pass there. Third down and eight. Rogers looking, looking, now trying to break contains. Got an opportunity to run for the first down if he can get to the boundary. And he might not have won the race. Great pursuit from a defensive standpoint by Brandon Harrington. It's going to be an inches play as to whether Rogers got enough distance to move the chains. Looks like it's going to be fourth down and a yard. You know, uh, Coach Dale Jones talked a lot about taking away Chandler Rogers' first read, making him hold that football a little longer. 
and, and that's what the Appalachian defense did. Great drive by Brian, Brandon Harrington getting out there. You know, he, he's a he's an outside linebacker trying to chase down a speedy quarterback, but did a great job of pursuing the football. ULM six of nine on fourth down this year. The fake to Henry. Pass play broken up. Intended for Knight. Late flag comes in as Rodgers was hitting the backfield, and that's where that flag was thrown back around the 42-yard line. So Knight was broken up on the pass catch attempt. Well, we may have a flag against App State's defense. I, I tell you what, uh, a great defensive play by Madison Cone will be negated by DeMarco Jackson for being a little too aggressive. You know, when you got a guy with over 50 tackles, uh, multiple tackles for loss, multiple sacks, you want him to be aggressive, but sometimes you've got to be smart, particularly when your defense has done a good job of holding this ULM offense in check thus far. Especially on a fourth down try like that. So the Warhawks now in business into Mountaineer territory for the first time today. At the App State 36, first down and 10 for Chandler Rogers and company. Rogers just one of four in the passing game thus far today. Jet sweep and an open alleyway that closed quickly for Malik Jackson. If he cuts inside, he may have a touchdown there. Instead, comes outside and gets stripped up for a gain of four. I tell you, you know, uh, Battison Cone made that tackle look pretty easy. That is a hard tackle to make. I'm sorry, that was 13. I'm sorry, that was not Madison Cone. That was Ted Roof. That's an outside linebacker tackling a great running back in space. A so great job. And a one quarter, all Mountaineers here at the Rock. Second quarter action here at Kid Brewer Stadium. App State taking on ULM. The Warhawks trying to get going offensively. Only 34 yards of total offense in the first quarter. Terry Bowden trying to get his troops going. Said this is his first year as a CEO head coach. It's the first time that he has not called plays. He said Rich Rodriguez is going to call plays. He wants to do it a certain way. We're going to do it that way. And over these last couple of weeks, the Warhawks have been guided well in that regard. Again, nearly 500 yards of offense over these last two ball games. Wins over a very respectable Liberty team. South Alabama last week down at Malone Stadium trying to get back at it on the road here this afternoon. They've got third down and five coming up. Trying to eat into a 21-0 deficit. Jamal Rogers has made some things happen with his feet on this drive. He's going to get the swing pass out to Andrew Henry. Converged on by three black shirts and gets tackled at the 29-yard line. So all of that to pick up three yards. This will be fourth down and at least three for Henry and the Warhawks. Good, good read by uh, Chandler Rogers. Again, ASU showed him a six-man uh, front, drop back three, ended up putting pressure on him with three down linemen. He hit his check down, did what he was supposed to do. Good job of running to the football by Appalachian. ULM going for it again on fourth down. They had a fourth down conversion play that was negated by penalty that they missed previously on this drive. Fourth down and three, Rogers sprinting. Needs to get to the 27-yard line, didn't do it. Had to get actually to the 26, and now the ball pops somehow loose and then they're, they're, taken by Rodgers in for what is being looked at as a ULM touchdown. They're going to say that his bottom landed on the defender, not the ground, and that's why he continued to run. But I think they need to review that. I am quite sure that that will be something that is looked at again. You know, the tough part about that, David Jackson, is, you know, if, if you do not really, he spun, his knee does not touch. But if you don't tackle him, if you tackle him too decisively, you might get a personal foul. I mean, I'm not, not, you know, he's a, he's a runner at that point, but, but the defensive players are, are at a disadvantage nowadays. Again, if you look, he's, his, his elbow is down. But uh, but again, he, he it looks as if his bottom never touched the ground, but the elbow touched the ground. He should be called down, and that should be Mountaineer ball on turnover. And Trey Cobb stopped in pursuit right away. So the difference here is a fourth down stop or a touchdown for ULM. Mountaineer fans feeling pretty good about it. Let's see if Kyle Olson agrees. Another huge momentum swing for ULM. Do you think that you might have a second effort touchdown to give you a little bit of juice, and instead they rule Chandler Rogers down 
And App State's got the football yet again on a fourth down stop. That that was the rest, the, the, the right call, Dave Jackson. Again, he was down, but again, you have to salute the uh, ULM for, for wanting to have to try and create a big play. Timeout on the field, 21-0. Mountaineers with the ball when we come back. Fans at Kid Brewer Stadium with plenty to cheer about thus far. 21-0 App State not only leading the football game, but getting all of the breaks right now. And breaks are something that you don't need to give Chase Bryce as you take a look at his game last week. 347 yards, a pair of touchdowns, 18 of 28 passing. You take a look at his play today, 11 of 13 in the passing game, 121 in the air, two touchdowns in there as well. Chase Bryce, back-to-back -back solid weeks leading this App State offense here at Kid Brewer Stadium. You, say, you know, you say back-to-back -back solid weeks, but really he's had a, a decent season relative to being efficient as a quarterback. If you take away the Louisiana game where he was 15 of 27, that's 55% completion, which is below the average. I mean, he's had a decent season throwing at least at a 63% completion percentage clip each game. Corey Sutton diving catch, 37-yard line. That should be good enough to move the chains for App State. That's the Mountaineers' ninth first down of the contest. They got a three-touchdown lead, two of those touchdowns coming off ULM turnovers. The Warhawks were plus eight in the turnover margin category coming into play today, but they've coughed up two. They've led directly to points. Hennigan turns inside quickly, gets rocked on the play in a little talking after the fact that was a solid open field tackle by Travion Webster we talked about him earlier being part of that solid Sam linebacking core for ULM the Warhawks from a defensive perspective can bring the pain with Williams Webster Zach Woodard three of the better linebackers in the league yeah you talk about the proficiency of ULM's defense and you're talking a little bit about Chase Bryce earlier but but Dave the the the, the right now that offensive line is make is really protecting Chase well and giving him the opportunity to make some good decisions. Nate Noel trying to get to the sideline. Picks up positive yardage, about seven yards on first down to the Mountaineer 47. Offensive line led by Bear Hunter, of course. Terry Bowden giving some, some praise as well. Part of that being offensive line play, saying this is not a standalone offense. And what he meant by that was this isn't a one-trick pony. It's not an offensive line that leads to a great run game. It's an offensive line that can run block, pass block, and can let this Mountaineer attack be as diverse and multidimensional as possible as Nate Noel carries the first down off the left side. And I think that's another thing, too, Avery, is that you don't see them taking all the positive run plays to one side. They're able to go either way, short side, wide side, what well, have you. And that, and that says chain. a lot about the offensive line. That says a lot about the balance of Anderson Hardy, who's the left tackle. You know, Damian uh, Daly, who's the left guard. Typically, that's your pass protection side. Well, Appalachian can run behind either side. The right side, which is uh, held up by Isaiah Helms and Cooper Hitch, or the left side. Just great job up front. Noel stutter steps in open space, gets into the secondary down to the 32-yard line. That's another first down gain for the Mountaineers. Pick up a 14 for Nate Noel. And, and again, we talked about this earlier. We, we talk about the stretch play, but again, just good job by Noel running straight up the middle. A Appalachian's uh, offensive line doing a good job of knocking folks off the ball. Bryce with a play action look going toward that sideline again. Corey Sutton <laughs> makes the catch, but he's out of bounds. Another circus grab, but he's out of bounds in the process. And I, I tell you what, I don't know how that didn't get picked. And now there's an injured Warhawk down out of that secondary. So we'll see a timeout here on the field. He just laughed because, again, uh, I think Chase was, was throwing off his back foot. He was being pressured and threw it up there. But, but Corey made the catch and made it look really easy. Take a break here with an injured Warhawk down. 11.04 to go second quarter. 21-0 App State on top of ULM. Back at Kid Brewer Stadium, David Jackson, Avery Hall with you on this Sunbelt Saturday. 21-0 App State in front. You see some quarterback warm-up activity over on the ULM sideline. Chandler Rogers got the start today, but Colby Suits appears to be throwing and gearing up for possible action here. Suits part of a group of quarterbacks that has FBS starting experience. He started the first eight games of 2020 
Rhett Rodriguez obviously hurt earlier this year. Jeremy Hunt also on the roster, started the last two games of the 2020 season. So Rich Rodriguez blessed to have some experience in the quarterback room, even with Rhett Rodriguez, who we'll talk about a little bit more later, being sidelined with injury and still a couple of weeks away from being able to come back to the active roster. Chase Bryce looking to go up top once again. He's got a man that Sutton, he throws it over his head and an incomplete off the back line. That'll bring up third down and 10 from the 32. Bryce is trying to attack with Corey Sutton being the target on back-to-back -back plays. Sutton out of bounds on the last catch, a little bit overthrown that time. Again, just going through his read progression again, obviously it, it's from underneath to deep. And again, he saw Corey kind of running that that uh, post route. Looked like he had a little space between he and the defender. Just just a little, a little too much muscle on the throw. Cam Peoples on the attack, running the football, bouncing off of his defender to the 25-yard line. Solid tackle made by Adam Sparks, the senior out of Missouri, actually part of the same defensive unit, coached by former Mountaineer linebacker D.J. Smith, part of Eli Drinkwitz's staff over in Columbia. Not that Columbia, the other one. Fourth down run, Peoples. Sniffing the end zone to the five. Gets it in there. Touchdown, black and gold. Cam Peoples walking the tightrope down the sideline for the fourth Mountaineer score of the day. Wow, and rightfully so. The big guys up front are celebrating. But just a great run by Cam Peoples. Again, the offensive line running that stretch zone type blocking. And, and they try and stretch it out to the sideline if they have to. But Peoples is really just looking for a seam. Did a great job of, of hitting the seam and, and, and finding a, some, some additional running space after contact, tiptoeing down the sideline. 12 touchdowns on the season for Cam Peoples. PAT attempt from Staten splits the pipes. Cam Peoples, eight carries, 58 yards, a 26 I, I, yard. Just, just, Touchdown. Just good job, DJ. Look at him fighting off defenders, tiptoeing down the sideline, just doing an outstanding job. Chamber of Commerce fall afternoon here at The Rock. 28-0 App State leading ULM. 10-27 to go here in the second quarter. Cam Peoples, 26 yards on the touchdown scamper. He has been in the end zone twice. 58 yards rushing today, better than seven yards of carry, and tough yards down the sideline there as well. Peoples and the Mountaineers out to a four-score lead. This is a ULM team that had all kinds of offensive momentum. They have not been able to convert on fourth down. They have turned the ball over a couple of times. They have really not been able to get out of their own way, and App State has capitalized. It's one thing, Avery, to give up the possessions. It's another thing to take advantage of them, and I think Sean Clark would say to his team at halftime, Great job of taking everything that was given to you. Again, they, they, they're showing a lot of poise. They're being tenacious on offense. You know, that starts with the play calling. It starts with the execution by the offensive line, the receivers, the quarterback, as well as the running backs. But I tell you, don't count this ULM team out. They scored 28 points in the third quarter against Liberty. So they can score quickly. They're not out of this ball game. Jaya Wright getting set to take some snaps here for the first time in a while as Chandler Rogers is gonna get a breather. Handoff goes to Andrew Henry and he has stood up. Mountaineers meet that one early. Demetrius Taylor in on the stop as Jaya Wright hands off to Henry and more of the same, unfortunately, for the Warhawk offense. And you know, it, it's important for coach uh, uh, Dale Jones to continue to put uh, pressure on Jaya because again, it, you know, I don't think his feet are as fleet as, as Rogers. Across the middle and that's a drop. Jared Sparks had that ball in his grasp at the 30-yard line and just couldn't look it in. So that'll bring up third down and 11. Jaya Wright making his third appearance. He's now one of four on the year. As you take a look at Chandler Rogers, two of five, only three yards passing thus far in the contest and just not that right kind of synergy. So give him a second hit reset, see what Jaya Wright can do. Who will roll out on third down and long, trying to run for the first down. Comes to a sliding stop out of bounds several yards short just didn't have the right angle to run for that first down so right will see his head coach pull off the offense and send out the punting unit with fourth down and five 
again, right, not just he's he's quick. He he's able to run the ball, but he's not Chandler Rogers. Good job by uh, Huff there, uh, just you know, creating enough awareness to make a great open field tackle by forcing the guy out of bounds. So again, just great job there. Devin McCormick. I'm sorry, that was Trey Hot Cobb. Sorry about that. Devin McCormick on to try to flip field position. One of the best punters in NAIA play a year ago. He's boomed away as much as a 56 yarder. He will set the Mountaineers back to their own 32. Here in the second quarter of action with a four score lead. App State from an offensive perspective, 256 yards of total offense. Chase Bryce 13 of 17 in the passing game. 132 in a pair of scores. Nate Noel, 10 carries, 59 yards. It's been working pretty much in all facets for App State. They've been able to run the ball effectively. That's set up a nice passing attack as well. Just efficient across the board. Good good run game uh, efficiency today. Uh, routes being run well. Uh, quarterbacks making good throws. Offensive line doing a good job protecting and protecting even when they blitz. So just good overall e effort here. Nate Noel up the middle into the secondary, still on his feet, tripped up at the 45-yard line. Turf Monster might have got him on a 15-yard gain for a Mountaineer first down. Again, he runs low to the ground, and probably on that play, Dave, he's running a little too low, and his, his balance just tipped him over. If he, if he can keep his balance, he, he's still uh, got a lot of real estate in front of him. That Marshall game here at Kid Brewer Stadium, Nate Noel, 20 carries, 187 yards. He had 104 yards in the fourth quarter of that game as App State put their future conference conference mates on ice and won that one in comeback fashion one of those nail biting victories the Mountaineers have had a few of those this year two and one in games decided by a possession or less they're up four scores here now as the passing attack to Pearson nets a first down inside the ULM 40. You know, uh, Dave you're seeing the tight end involved in the offensive production today. I, I bet uh, Pearson has been targeted probably four or five times today, and I bet over the he, he only had five targets throughout the entire season. So that's the wrinkle that Appalachian is also throwing into uh, its its scheme today to try and make these safeties pay attention to all of the threats. Four catches, 42 yards for Pearson, catching each one of those four targets on this day. Play action, look for Bryce on first down, firing down the sideline. What a grab! Wow. Mike Evans. Mike Evans on the catch. The tight end again stretches to the 11 and another Mountaineer first down. What what a, a great catch by, again, excellent throw. Not necessarily behind back shoulder, but just only where Evans could catch the football. Good concentration by Evans. Xavier Williams on the defense there. Corey Sutton trying to stretch for the App State touchdown ball rolls as it hits the turf out of bounds. It looks like they're going to rule Sutton down on the catch at the two yard line. That's eight yards on first down, actually nine on the spot. And the Mountaineers will have. Actually, they're going to give him the first down. They'll say first and goal now for the black and gold of App State as Sutton makes a 10 yard catch. They, you know, you talk about our, our, our tight ends. I mean, they, they've not really been targeted much throughout the season. You know, I, like I said, maybe eight times if I can remember. But today, we've had at least six, six targets to the tight ends, and it's been the difference in the football game relative to the safeties. Sperlin sliding in motion, and it's a pass back to Sperlin again. Bryce to Sperlin times two here, and the Mountaineers have opened up a five-score lead at the Rock. What a, what a catch. You know, Caleb Sperlin is 5'11", 235, very versatile. Again, he, he's on the Paul Horning watch list because he, he's got two and a half sacks this season and now four receiving touchdowns. And the Paul Horning Award goes to the most versatile player in, in the FBS. Sperlin's going in uh, Sean Clark's office on Monday and demanding <laughs> a, another package. Say, hey, let's, let's get me the rock, coach. Staten's PAT straight through the uprights. How about Chandler Staten just wearing his leg out today because these Mountaineers keep scoring. Sperlin, you Again, can't get much more open than that. I tell you, Chase Bryce is comfortable. He just rolls out, 
does a fantastic job of just putting it where the big guy who's a defensive lineman can bear. You know, he doesn't have great hands, but putting it right exactly where he needed to. Great job by Chase Bryce. Super senior out of Galax, Virginia, about two hours up US 221 from here. How about that kind of reception for these players coming back? You know, it's interesting after the Louisiana loss, Sean Clark alluded to this during this week, and we heard it from Thomas Hennigan as well. The the quick outreach from the coaching staff. Mountaineers get back at about seven in the morning on Thursday. On Thursday afternoon, they had a team meeting, and Sean Clark met with the leadership council, of which Thomas Hennigan's a member. Right after that meeting was over, and they said, "All right, it's time to make sure that we keep our house in order here. App State doesn't get beat." quite honestly like they 41, did 41-13 at Louisiana a few weeks ago. They wanted to make sure things stayed tight. It's those super seniors like Sperlin, like Hennigan that stayed in guys' ears in the weight rooms, kept people focused on Coastal Carolina. Thomas Hennigan even saying that's why he came back. He came back to try to beat that team for a conference championship after losing down in Conway a year ago. So it means something to those older guys, whether it's scoring a touchdown to go up 35 nothing or making key first down catches. It means something to those players that have helped establish a tradition of excellence in a program like this. Well, and, and, and the fact that you have 14 super seniors coming back says a lot about your culture because the, a lot of these guys could have said, I'm going to go start my professional career or continue to try and play football. But you had 14 guys want to come back to Appalachian and, and that's how you lead. That's that's the Appalachian way. Jaya Wright throwing in duress out of bounds. It'll bring up second down and 10. Again, uh, lots of pressure on the quarterback right now. Again, Appalachia's doing a really good job of, of making Jai Wright uncomfortable. And again, this is an offensive line that has not played a lot of snaps together. And Appalachian is, is taking advantage of that, showing them different packages, different blitz, different, different format, fronts up front. Right, quick to run. He tries to get to the right side of the boundary and is stripped up out there pretty quickly. Nick Rawlson on the tackle out of the defensive backfield. Three yard gain brings up third down and seven. Still got seven minutes to play in this second quarter. This first half has been dominated by App State. ULM quarterbacks only two of seven passing, only 46 yards of offense for ULM team that had averaged five, 455 per game over their last two weeks. Pass over to the sideline, broken up. Wright trying to hit that short sideline route. And Ja'Kyle Holmes, the intended target, had it batted away. That'll bring up fourth down and long and another punting situation for Devin McCormick. You, you know, we've talked about ULM and the success they've had coming into this football game. And, uh, you know, we talked a little bit about the highlights of their last football game, the highlights of Appalachian's last football game, David Jackson. You know, and you just really know how, don't know how kids are going to respond until they're punched in the mouth. And, you know, I, th I think this Appalachian football team has stunned ULM to this point. McCormick's best punt today, a 42-yarder. Malik Williams takes this one off the hop. And at about the 28-yard line will scurry out of bounds. Up at the 35, Mountaineer football with 6.20 to go in the second quarter. 325 yards in, up 35 nothing on ULM. You know, you put in the tape and you watch ULM against South Alabama. You even watch uh, them against Liberty. I mean, even let's take their defense, for example, Dave. They, they, they've created, you know, 20 sacks, some multiple turnovers. They just created a lot of havoc. And so you expected them to play better. Had you told me it would be 35 nothing with at the six minute mark in the second quarter, I would have said, well, uh, I would have been shocked because I just thought ULM would play much better today. Chase Bryce just under 200 yards passing. He'll stick to the ground attack. That's Cam Peoples to the 39-yard line. Peoples on the run today, his ninth carry, about 65 yards. One of the things Frank Ponce, offensive coordinator, talked about was needing to establish the run to set up the deep pass. And when you had those deep pass opportunities, you had to hit them. Chase Bryce has been awfully efficient, and the deep pass game has been part of that. 17 of 21 total in the air, 184 yards, three touchdowns. We got second down and three. Peoples running right this time into a pile of ULM defenders. Travion Webster in on the tackle. Should be good for a Mountaineer first down or awfully close to it. They'll spot him short. Call this third down and one. Can't, can't say enough about Anderson Hardy, Damian Daly, Bear Hunter, Isaiah Helms, Cooper Hodges up front. They're doing a fantastic job 
of creating gaps and seams for the running backs to run in. And the ULM defense gets a surge there when they needed it most. Quay Drake, the first man to Cam Peoples, stops him on third and short. Spot at the 42-yard line. App State needed the 43. Fourth and inches coming up. Mountaineers going for it up 35 nothing in their own territory. Peoples going to be close. Looks like he's going to be stopped a yard short, and ULM gets a fourth down stop. Finally, a break goes the way of the Warhawks in this one. That'll give them some good field position. Good, good job by... Caleb Thomas and, and Sidarius, uh, all those guys up front doing a good job of getting penetration and, and not really, you know, allowing that stretch play to stretch them out, maintaining gap integrity and good alignment. You know, last week or, or two weeks ago in the Liberty win, there was a play where Liberty blocked a field goal attempt. As you see, Rich Rodriguez getting into his team a little bit. Liberty blocks a field goal attempt at first and goal at the two, and ULM pitched him out four times. Gets the fourth down stop, turns that into points going back the other way. They were able to turn the momentum of what was a, a momentum changing play back in their direction. Let's see if ULM could try to do something here as Rich Rod looks at an offense that's only got 49 total yards in this first half of play. Overthrown pass by Wright intended for Zach Johnson. As that'll bring up second down and 10. Zach Johnson was running that that uh, post route and uh, just Jaya Wright just just overthrew him and that that has probably a lot to do with repetitions. You know this week in practice you know Chandler Rogers probably got most of the reps 80 percent of the reps and again that's just with the receiver and the quarterback being a little out of sync there. Right on second down. Looking up top. And a rolling catch flag on the play. That's a first down grab for Jevin Frett and the Warhawks inside the Mountaineer five. That's a uh, good concentration by Frett. Again, uh, DB needs to probably turn around on that play, uh, but 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 good concentration by Frett making a good grab there. Only the second completion of the year for Wright. I'm going to decline that. Let's check the replay of it again. Again, pressure, you know, good throw. He was able to step into his throw. Again, just, just a good job of coming back to the football and making an adjustment by Fred there. Again, that's just good body control. Dante Small getting a little bit of extra time with Sean Jolly out as ULM tries to stick to the ground on first and goal. And that carry to Abraham Alsi. Tight end used also as a fullback. He was a number one fullback in the country. Coming out of high school. He's he's a big fullback. And, and I tell you, DeAndre Dingle Prince did a pretty good job of getting penetration and getting that TFL, but really just a good job of bringing him down to the ground. I'll see one of two players, Terry Bowden, brought from Akron. And it's right coming around the corner and into the end zone for the ULM touchdown. Warhawks on the board as Jaya Wright scores from three yards out. You know, uh, Coach, Coach, Bowden said one one thing about his football team is we're, he said this football team will compete and we will not quit. And uh, you can see being down 35 nothing. They're, they're not afraid. They're not you know, obviously they're probably shocked a little bit, but they're still fighting. Obviously uh, that, that drive was aided by uh, pass interference, but uh, good good resiliency by ULM. Callum Sutherland's PAT is good. 17 of 17 on point after tries. Let's check it again. Great play fake sell there by Wright. Great, great job of play faking. Good. Everybody's focused on that fullback. He takes it out and does a good job of getting in the end zone. He can, It looks like he's playing in that World Series, sliding a little bit in the end zone. Good job by, by Wright leading that offensive uh, possession, that drive down the field. Rich Rodriguez saying that you know again he's he's blessed with quarterbacks that have some experience and this is a chance to, to update folks on Rhett Rodriguez uh, he was very uh, uh, quick to respond after uh, the last couple of weeks and, and just kind of letting folks know that he is getting healthier took an odd shot uh, in a game earlier this year against Troy that actually punctured a lung at a very well documented and very uh, difficult to explain quickly 
issue with that whole entire deal with getting hurt, getting that injury noticed, going through the hospital, uh, in the hospital for a couple of days. He is about two weeks away, they think, for maybe being able to come back on the football field again, which is just amazing. and speaks to the testament of the intestinal fortitude that Rhett Rodriguez has and the relationship that he's got with his father as well. And that's been something that uh, has been interesting to see develop here in this odd situation where son is on the sideline and even hurt, yet dad has to go and try to figure out the quarterback room and Rhett's been right there with him the whole time. Great attitude from what we've heard. Again, a tough kid. Uh, you know, and, and, and I tell you, he transferred to ULM and, 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 and was looking forward to playing for his father. But at the same time, uh, he, he, he knows the offense. I mean, he, he knows it backwards and forwards. So when he goes down and they have to install Chandler Rogers, and then they've got a young, off, uh, uh, inexperienced offensive line, young backs, uh, it was tough. And, and but, but Red Rodriguez was the biggest cheerleader and, and kept, kept, kept folks, uh, you know, kind of pointing in the right direction. And I'm sure they'll be glad to have him back once he's able to play again. Nate Noel trying to get some yards in between the tackles. ULM has made some adjustments on the run game, and they have been a little stingier here in these last couple of drives. Three-yard pickup for Nate Noel. The Mountaineers ran ragged there for a little while. 26 carries, 150 yards total for App State running the football today. But ULM getting the fourth down stop on the previous drive. Limiting Noel to just three yards on first down there. 35-7 our score there, you see. As we play with three and a half minutes left here in the second quarter. Pass intended down the field, incomplete. That intended for Christian Horn, his first target of the day. That'll bring up third down and seven for Chase Bryson Company. You, you talk about the Warhawks getting a little stingy on the defense. Obviously, they've got big Ty Shelby up front. They've got Caleb Thomas and Quincy uh, Ledette and Miles uh, Cole, but they've also been walking up their safety and putting uh, you know both linebackers close to the box, and so they pretty much have gone from you know I guess six in the box to eight in the box, and they're saying okay we're going to make you beat us throwing the football, and that's what Appalachians are attempting to do. Third down and seven, ball is deflected and nearly picked off. That ball was hit at the line of scrimmage. Quincy Ledette was running underneath it. If his arm is about another six inches longer, he comes down with an interception. Instead, Bryce's pass falls incomplete. The Mountaineers turned out on third down and short, or rather a third down for the second consecutive time. So we'll see for the first time today, Xavier Sabach on the punt, just under 39 and a half yard average, eighth in the league. He came into the year on the Ray Guy watch list at a 51 yarder against Georgia State earlier this year driving spiraling kick inside the 27 yard line boogie Knight on the catch there and ulm with the football and 310 to go until halftime with an opportunity to eat into this 28 point lead and avery hall you know you, you've seen this first half dominated by app state but the warhawks use a fourth down stop turn around put points on the board you score right here and all of a sudden you, you feel like you might be able to inch back into this ball game with the ball first to start the second half. And, and, and you know, that's called leadership. That's called great coaching because, it, it, you know, we were talking to Coach Bowden and we were talking to Coach Rodriguez as well as Coach Alley. They all just talked about making sure that they communicated from play one at the beginning of this season to always keep playing. If something bad happens, keep playing. If something good happens, keep playing. And that's what this Warhawks football team is doing. They're just continuing to play and play hard. Jaya Wright getting the block from Ja'Kyle Holmes there, trying to spring free up the far sideline. Picks up maybe two yards on the play. That'll bring up second down. Actually, they'll spot him out. Said he took a step back rather than a step forward. Call that second down and 11. Just under three minutes to go in the second quarter. Ball at the 27-yard line. Anytime you see a, a good offense, up-tempo offense, run a play similar to that, which is a design run play, and obviously they're trying to stretch out the defense. You know what they're trying to do, David Jackson, is make that safety, make, make that linebacker, outside linebacker come up on a play action or come up on a similar type formation, and then they're going to throw over top, just like they're trying to do here. And that ball's picked off. Mountaineers with the interception. Ryan Huff down the sideline. Third interception, or uh, rather third takeaway of the day for the black and gold, and that sets the apps up in the red zone just before halftime. You, you, you know, it, 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 it's not rocket scientists. When you play football for as long as all of us have, you know, zone coverage is designed to, to, to disguise your coverage, not show what you're going to do underneath, and you hope the offense makes a mistake by not seeing 
a defender in a certain area. Great job of, of, of baiting the quarterback to throw that football, thinking that he could, he was not going to be there to make a play. Again, just great, great job by the safety of reading the quarterback's eyes. Fifth interception of the career of Ryan Huff. Remember, he had that interception right before halftime against East Carolina. That was a game changer. We'll see what this does for momentum for Appalachian State heading toward halftime here. He stepped out of bounds back at the 27, so that's where App State goes first down and 10, and Peoples strung out trying to get the far left corner. He'll pick up three yards on the play, so we'll call this second and seven from the 24, about 205 and rolling here in the second quarter. App State trying to sneak one more touchdown on the board of what has been nearly a flawless first half for Sean Clark's troops. You know, Appalachian has to avoid being complacent and continue to play hard here because, again, the Warhawks will. Peoples up the middle with defenders on his back. That was Zach Woodard who jumped on behind, and Peoples carries him forward inside the 20 to the 18-yard line. Third down and a yard. 135 to play until halftime. App letting that clock roll down a little bit, playing the clock management game that Sean Clark has displayed so well in the Marshall game. Able to utilize clock management, get a late field goal, hold off Marshall in a comeback attempt. And of course, against Coastal Carolina, able to squeak that clock down to the final three seconds before Staten's field goal won it. Peoples up the middle again. Looks like he might have been stopped short of the first down game there. I don't think he's going he's gonna to get it. It's the decision time now because, again, it's, uh, it's the ball on the 20. It's going to be fourth and, fourth and one. It looks like they're going to go for it. Um, so that wasn't a tough decision. Mountaineers 0 for 1 on fourth down today. Or 3 of uh, three 5, rather. Peoples on the carry. Back to the defense has the first down inside the 15-yard line. And now the Mountaineers will stop the clock with 45 seconds to play until the break of 35-7. And they will use one of their three timeouts here in this first half. That's just that, that uh, pro tempo or up tempo pace where Appalachian after the third down play ended, jumped right on the ball. And again, you don't give the, the defense time to really make any adjustments, make any substitutions. You don't give the defense any time to really think about the next play. And it paid off for Appalachian. Again, they get an easy, not an easy first down, but a want too tight play by Cam. Peoples is running hard behind his big offensive line. Hey, stick around at halftime. We'll be joined by App State Men's basketball coach Dustin Kearns in the booth with us right now and get his insight on the season ahead. Big tip-off dinner for the Mountaineers last night. Bobby Cremens was back in town. I think he's still down there telling stories. Well, he, Bobby Cremens, Dustin Kearns, two, two great basketball coaches, two great people. Uh, two of only three men to lead App State to the NCAA, NCAA tournament. NCAA tournament. And again, they do it the right way. The kids are doing well academically. And their kids play hard. That's one thing I like about watching Appalachian play basketball now is they, they play hard. They play the right way. We'll hear from Dustin Kearns here in a moment. Meanwhile, first down and 10 for the football Mountaineers from the ULM 14. Play action fake. Bryce rolling, throwing, corner, caught. Corey Sutton, touchdown, black and gold. That Chase Bryce made that play look easy. Again, he's rolling to his left. You've got two receivers trailing, uh, running a drag route to the same left towards the visitor sideline. Again, he th turns and throws back to his right and hits Corey Sutton in stride with a dart. Awesome play. He made it look easy. 14-yard strike to Sutton. 198 yards here in the first half for Chase Bryce. Staten's PAT splits it. Let's watch this again. Corey Sutton has been a busy guy here today. Five again, catches, 77 yards. Left. Again, it throws back against the grain to the right, and that's a dart. You, you, it doesn't get any better than that. That's a perfect throw. Good job of executing, buying Corey time to get into that route. Great throw, great catch. Pretty solid birthday for Corey Sutton. Five catches, 77 yards, a touchdown, seven total targets. He might get a big piece of cake tonight, right? I would say so. Great, having a fantastic day. Again, good protection up front by the offensive line. Again, that just that that's the stir that, that stirs a drink, but but good, good throw by Chase. And again, just good time of executing on the route and buying time for Corey to get to where he's supposed to be. 
Corey Sutton enjoying health this year. You know, back, you look back over his career, his only full season was 2018, played 13 games, 773 yards, 10 touchdowns in that season. Battled injuries. He came into the play today, third in the Sun Belt in yards and catches, about 85 yards per game. He is right on that productivity here in the first half. Excellent to see that young man, another one that sat out the COVID year last year, came back with a little something to prove, and he has proved it. Boogie Knight trying to bring a spark to ULM. He is tripped up back at the 17-yard line, ill-advised bringing that football off the goal line. And, and you, you understand where Boogie Knight is coming from. Everything has just been rolling right down ULM's throat in this first half, trying to bring a spark to a team that looked like they were an inch or two away from grabbing some momentum back until halftime, but yet another turnover proves costly. That's three turnovers the Mountaineers have scored on. Today. And, 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 and you know, it's, it, it, to the probably the lay fan, it looks like just a, a turnover, poor decision by the quarterback. But Dale Jones has dialed up some pressure. He's blitzing from different uh, spots on the field, different players, and he's creating a little havoc in the backfield for Wright as well as Chandler Rogers before they made the change. Henry trying to stiff arm his way out of a tackle and can't do it. DeMarco Jackson, one of the elite defenders in the Sun Belt, running right up his backside, pulls him down for a loss of two. You know, DeMarco Jackson is just a special football player. You know, you think about an inside linebacker. You know, they've got to take on 300-pound linemen. They've got to make sure they call the defense. They got to call the formation and all that stuff. But he can run. Did you see him just running to the sideline, running people down? Right with the pass. And Ooh. that's picked off. That's going back. Wow. Steven Jones, the pick six, and the route is on at the rock. Wow. Great job by Steven Jones. You, you can't time that any, any better. You cannot time that any better. If we get a replay of this, you, you'll see. He clearly did a good job of baiting the quarterback, thinking that he had enough space to throw the football to the guy, the receiver, and then he just stepped in front of it. Great job of baiting the quarterback into making a bad decision. Fourth interception of the career of Stephen Jones. We talked to Dale Jones about him earlier, just saying that amount of reps that he's had here over the season, he's just improving each and every time. And he said that that's what does it for you. You gotta get on the field to get those opportunities. And Stephen Jones sending us to halftime with a pick six, an exclamation point finish to this first half of play for Appalachian State. Again, Let's see it again. Rolling out to the right. He just, he baited the receiver. The receiver thought he had more, more real estate, more space to get that ball in there. But, but, but Stephen was just reading his eyes. Take a look here, just reading his eyes. Bam, there he goes. Excellent uh, play, excellent instincts by Stephen Jones. 49-7, Mountaineers lead it at the break. Halftime here at the Rock between App State and ULM. That score is not wrong. Actually, it is wrong. It's 49 to seven, but it's a big lead for App State here at halftime at Kid Brewer Stadium on a uh, perfect fall afternoon here at the Rock for college football. More on the game in a moment. We are pleased to be joined right now by the head basketball coach at Appalachian State, Dustin Kern, spending some time in the booth with us here today. Coach, first of all, uh, uh, congratulations on, on, on behalf of all alums on a run for the ages last year in the Sun Belt Championship. One of only three teams to punch their ticket to March Madness. I'm sure you're still feeling the positive effects of a run like that even today. Well, David, appreciate it. I'm so proud of our team and so proud of our players and, and, and coaches. And, you know, now the challenge is to sustain it and, uh, and, and stay a consistent winner and, and try to elevate the program to a higher level. You know, we were talking earlier about uh, Bobby Kremens being back for your tip-off dinner last night. You two are only uh, two of three people that have led that NCAA tournament run. But what was it like to have Coach Kremens back? And, and what kind of stories did he tell last night? <laughs> He's full of great stories. He's just someone that loves Appalachian State. He spent six years here, obviously, went, you know, helped go to the first NCAA tournament. And um, his kids were born here. And, and so uh, it was great to have him back. And it was just a great night celebrating our team, and but also celebrating this year's team, the new team, and, and as a, as a tip-off of the season. Uh, and so uh, a very nice night, well-attended crowd. And we, we lowered some banners, which first time in almost 15 years uh, the NIT in 2007 was the last banner up and so an exciting night for our program but also 
uh, a chance to turn the page and move forward to next season. So let's talk about this season. You've got Iona up on the schedule November 9th. Uh, East Tennessee State, great rivalry game coming to Boone on November 12th. How are preparations going to, to put this team on the floor? A lot of familiar faces back for you. We got a lot of guys back, a lot of experience, which is exciting. Um, but, you know, it, you become a victim of your own success scheduling wise. And so it's exciting for our program, but we've got Iona, who's arguably the CBS has the number one mid-major in America, went to the NCAA tournament. We've got a great program at East Tennessee State coming to Boone as our home opener. We've got Charlotte, who is an up, you know, rising program um, and, and always a big game uh, at home as well. We've got Hartford, uh, which was the NCAA, NCAA tournament team last year coming to Boone. We've started an old series with Furman. And then uh, we, we're going to go down to Tobacco Road and play Duke in North Carolina on top of a really, really good mid-major tournament in Florida, which we open up with Delaware, a, a, a foe that App State fans are familiar with from the, from the, for the from football days. But a very, very challenging schedule, but also one that will prepare us for the ever-challenging Sun Belt. Coach, finally for you, you know, you get that opportunity to, to have guys that have been around success how does that change the game for you as a coach to be able to go in maybe a little bit further advanced in your playbook, a little bit further advanced in your expectations for a squad that's already won? Yeah, but, you know, I think that that's the next challenge for our team is to, 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 to stay hungry and humble. We've got a lot of room for growth, a lot of room for improvement, including myself. And so we, we've all got to stay hungry and humble and, uh, and, and realize that we've got to get better and, and um, that, that the, the games because of last year's success are only going to be harder. A little, little bit bigger target. We're all of a sudden a little bit bigger game for folks. And so the games are going to be harder. And, uh, you know, I think, you know, the last thing I want to say, David, is I think for our program to take another step, uh, we've got to have an elite home court atmosphere. An elite home court advantage and so we've got to pack homes just like the you know the rock is packed right, right now for 15 games a year uh, for 15 games over about five months uh, we, we've got to have an elite home court atmosphere and, and that'll be the next step for our program do you think you can coach in the overalls that you were I, wearing at the last football game here that we saw you at? I'm afraid it would distract our opponent, our, <laughs> our, our team from laughing at me if I was in uh, in overhauls. Uh, what a performance today by Coach Clark and the, our football team. Wow. Well, I tell you what, it's certainly got the fans excited here. Hopefully they'll bring that same energy to the home center here soon. Coach, best of luck and congratulations again on your success here. Thank you, David. Go Mountaineers, take the stairs. All right. Dustin Kearns joining us here at halftime at the Rock. All Mountaineers here against ULM. 49-7 at the half. App State on top of ULM here in Sunbelt Conference. Play David Jackson, Avery Hall back with you. Let's take a look at some of these first half highlights. There were plenty of them from App State's perspective. 364 yards of total offense at Avery Hall. Chase Bryce looked very comfortable from the start in this one. I tell you what, he, he he's putting on a clinic. He's uh, 18 of 24, which is 75% uh, pass completion rate, uh, making just good decisions, doing a great job of buying more time, and and just throwing the football uh, on, uh, like on on a dart. I mean, just he's just he's just doing an outstanding job in this football game. See Bryce with the throw and catch, Malik Williams on the diving grab there. App State took advantage of four ULM turnovers in this first half of play. Got a little bit of luck there too. How about Pearson with the Nice catch and concentration as Bryce again goes to work, finds Caleb Sperlin for one of his two first half touchdowns, but four turnovers, 24 points, Avery. I mean, that, that really spelled difficulty for ULM early. And that's such a dichotomous picture for ULM, considering last week zero turnovers, last couple weeks zero turnovers, but today uh, they, they, they've been turnover prone. But I will tell you, Appalachian's defense has created a lot of havoc in the back backfield. They're bringing a lot of pressure with the front three as well as the linebackers and the safeties, and it's just creating problems for both Chandler Rogers and Jaya Wright, the two quarterbacks who've been in this football game. App State's defense playing so well, their defensive end's got two touchdowns in the game. Take a look, though, at ULM getting a little bit of offensive momentum as they bring Jaya Wright in to play quarterback after a rough start for Chandler Rogers. Wright with a sliding touchdown conversion there. And it looked like ULM was going to kind of get back in it here, but then the turnover bug catches up once again. You see Ryan Huff with the interception. It sets up 
the best throw and catch of the day from Chase Bryce. Again, just just good job. Look at this dart here by Chase Bryce. Again, he rolls to his left and throws against back against his body and just it's on the money. But again, U ULM is trying to, they're continuing to fight. They're continuing to, to try and, you know, make something happen. They're zero uh, of five on third down. Both quarterbacks have struggled, but, but they're still fighting. Steven Jones with the pick six right there at the end to kind of put an exclamation point on a 49-7 first half for App State. We are back with second half play right after this. You see Dustin Kern's favorite section. They're looking for him. They said, hey, you dress like us at one of these home games earlier this year. Where are you, coach? He was hanging out up here in the booth. He might he might have found that cheese tray down the hall, Avery Hall. I think he, he finds that the, the living is good up here in the media area, especially when the score is 49 nothing for App State. A home fans enjoying it. ULM going to try to get some momentum back early as they have the football first. ULM won the toss, elected to defer. And after, you know, you'd think a 49-7 game, you'd have thought points would have just started coming right away. Both teams were held out of the end zone on their opening possession. Really the story of this ball game is turnovers. App State's got 24 points off four turnovers and, and that makes this a whole lot more spread out football game than it would be otherwise. Dave Jackson, you talk about turnovers. Appalachian's offense has had six turnovers in the last two ball games, which obviously that's taken away possessions, taken away opportunities to score points. Now, you, you, you turn around, you come into today's game, we've got, we're plus four on turnovers. We've not turned the football over, but we've taken advantage of four turnovers and scored 24 points. That's the difference. It would be a 25-7 football game, but it's 49-7 because of the conversion of, of, of turning to turnovers to points and being, being aggressive with the football once we get it. Jaya Wright stays on at quarterback. One of seven in the passing game, 40 yards. Hand off to Andrew Henry. Has a little bit of running room across the 30 dragging defenders. Up to the 34, that's an eight-yard pickup for Andrew Henry, who has not played as well as his numbers show that he can be in terms of impact on the offense. They're looking at an 84-yard rushing tally over the last couple of weeks, a pair of touchdowns. He's averaging better than 50 yards per game on the season, but he was hemmed up and then some in that first half as Wright fakes the toss, tries to run up the middle, and that does not fool Trey Cobb, who gets the tackle. And that'll be no gain, third down. Trey Cobb did a good job of getting um, underneath, you know, two pulling guards, getting up in the mix and making a great play on, on right. Uh, again, uh, just just this this Louisiana team is not going to quit, but uh, we've got Appalachian has to keep the, the intensity and tenacity up to, to make sure they maintain the same intensity. Sean Clark said his team needed to win conversion downs to win the game. ULM was 0 of 5 on third down, 0 of 1 on fourth down in the first half. Trying to get that conversion, and finally, for the first time today, the Warhawks will indeed convert on a third down play as Jared Sparks hauls in about a five-yard catch. Move the sticks for the Warhawks here on the opening drive of the second half. That'll that'll make, uh, gosh, uh, right. What is it? Two of of eight uh, throwing the football, and uh, so he definitely wants to be more efficient with the football. But uh, he, they're going to try and you know call plays to kind of get him in position to. To make to be successful uh, in the second half, to at least have some positive momentum as they wrap up this football game. Jaya Wright trying to string out defenders. TD Roof in there on pursuit. Gain of one brings up second down and nine. TD Roof again getting some play at outside linebacker. 90-yard interception against Elon here at the Rock earlier this year. And it you know, Dave, uh, Coach Bowden is a very charismatic guy, and I can only imagine what he said to this Warhawk football team in the locker room. I mean, you know, one, you're down by 42 points. Nice slant route and a catch by Zach Jackson in the Mountaineer territory to the 38-yard line. You know, Solid 20-yard plus pickup for the Warhawks. Great throw, great, great catch. But, you know, he's a program builder. Everywhere he's been, Samford. Uh, Auburn, Akron, everywhere he's been, he's been a program builder. And I guarantee he told these guys, whatever you do, don't quit. You fight through this football game. And they've come out with some fight. Henry on the left side run gets inside the 35-yard line. Pick up of five yards on first down. Yep. Terry Bowden has done it at Sanford. Took Sanford to the FCS playoffs. One double A back at the time that he was there. 
Obviously had success at Auburn. He was at North Alabama, went D2 playoffs there. Akron was the team he took to the postseason. You know, asked him about whether he was a, an automatic reclamation guy, right? Some of those folks have that in their MO as Wright's taken down to the backfield. Loss of three on the play. Asked him if that's the program he likes to take over, and he said not necessarily. He's like those programs were all just kind of in that space when he got there, but he's been able to find success because he knows what to expect. Wright looking for the seam route, and he's got a man there for a first down catch. Beautiful catch and throw there. Sparks with the grab for the first down. Movement of the chains inside the Mountaineer red zone. You know, he, he's, he, he talked to these guys at halftime. Offensive line is blocking much better up front. Uh, Wright is, is really settled down. He, okay, he, he knew, you know, he was pulled into the football game in the second quarter because Chandler Rogers was not playing well. And now he's, he was able to go in to, to halftime, make some adjustments. Uh, and come back out. No, he's going to be pulling the trigger, and he's he's more poised running this offense right now. Right on the right side. Run! Tripped up in the backfield that time. Could not quite get away from the elusive Caden Smith. This is a ULM offense that's been awfully efficient in the red zone this year, counting their productivity today. 15 of 16 on red zone tries, 10 touchdowns, 5 field goals. They were a perfect 5-for-5 five five against South Alabama in their win last week in red zone chances. They just haven't been there enough today. Haven't been able to possess the football long enough. It'll be good, interesting to see how this Appalachian defense responds here in the red zone because we've, we've had some 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 uh, lapses in the red zone, but it'll be interesting to see how this defense responds. Second and 11, right, the throw and a catch for a touchdown. ULM on the board to start the second half run as the Warhawks find pay dirt for just the second time today. That's Darian Wiley, the redshirt freshman out of Atlanta with the touchdown score with 10.35 to go here in the third. Hey, just that was a great drive, drive great way to respond in getting the, the, the second half kickoff and taking it down the field and, and, and scoring. Again, just, just good offensive line play on the run game and on pass protection and good execution by Wright. Callum Sutherland on for the PAT and he splits the uprights and how about the youthful drive here as you look at Jaya Wright to the redshirt freshman Darian Wiley. Great presence, nice catch and release and the Warhawks on the board here to start second half play. 49-14 ULM trailing App State here at the Rock and Boom. Knock on this door tomorrow night. They've got full-size candy bars. I just got to think. I am going to run up to that house and knock twice. Well, now, look, if you run up to that house, look how high that thing is up there. That's Howard's knob, right? Yeah, you're going to need more than a full-size candy bar. Full-size candy true, bar and a gallon of water. True story, Dave. <laughs> I drove up Howard's knob as a student here, and when I was coming down, my brakes started smoking. I jumped out of my car. I thought it was on fire, but it was just my brakes smoking. Oh, my. Well, I'm glad you lived to tell that tale because depending on where your brakes go out on Howard's knob, that could be a harrowing adventure. Speaking of harrowing adventures, that's what ULM strip to Boone has been like thus far. 49-14, Warhawks did score on their opening drive here in the second half as Terry Bowden's team tries to grab a little bit of momentum. This game marred by turnovers, and that's where kind of that Halloween reference comes from. If you're ULM, four turnovers have led to 24 points. App State has utilized that to kind of put the hammer down here in this game thus far. Nate Noel trying to get the party started here on the ground up to the 35 yard pickup for the Mountaineer Speedster running back to start off play. Noel 13 carries. Check that 14 carries just over 80 yards in the contest now. Good good job of getting behind his pads and running uh, you know for positive yards. Again you know we always talk about having a great uh, great production on first down. And really what that means is you, you want to get more than three yards on first down to have a productive play. Play action, look, Bryce had that pass batted down. Big arm comes up there from Zach Woodard who has been active today. Thomasville, Alabama native. Came in out of Jacksonville State, eighth in the Sun Belt and tackles heading into play today, but it's the deflection that brings up third down and five. He's 6'1", 235, but he plays so much taller than that from his, his uh, linebacker spot just just very aggressive and has a nose for the the football and again coach Zach Alley when, when I was talking with him he said he, he's he's my coach on the field he, he's the guy I can really communicate well with Woodard an important interception in that 
Jackson State win, the first victory for ULM as Malik Williams catches across the seam. Got an opportunity to outrun some folks inside the 20, finally tackled in a heap. At the 14-yard line, first down, Mountaineers. Big gain for Chase Bryce. Watch it again. Great job, Chase. Looking over the middle, finding and splitting those safeties, getting the ball into the playmaker's hands, and he does the rest. Good yard uh, yardage after the catch by Malik and protecting the football from defenders trying to pull him down from behind. First down for the Mountaineers at the ULM 15-yard line. Bryce rolling out again. He's got a man. That's Hennigan out of bounds off the back of the end line. He saw the gold underneath his feet, but he was a little bit too far back there. That'll bring up second down on the heels of the 56-yard completion to Malik Williams. You, you want to work on your mechanics and bring that ball down just a little bit. Again, he rolls out to his right, tosses it over the over the safety over the linebacker's head there, uh, in the spot where only Hennigan could catch it. Just needs to bring the football down a little bit. 9:33 clock stop, third quarter, 49-14, App State leading with the football in the ULM red zone on their opening drive of the second half. Bryce with the handoff to Noel, and he's chased down from behind. Solid pursuit there for ULM's Travion Webster, the senior out of Longview, Texas, have said his name a few times today. Fourth in the Sun Belt and tackles coming into play this afternoon. I'll tell you how talented this Warhawks defense is. Travion Webster started behind Jay Quez Williams today. And but he he's their leading tackler uh, on this football team. 15 but tackles in the last two weeks playing very well, but uh, good job of hustle. That's a hustle play because he really came from the backside and didn't really let Nate get going. Third and 11 loss of one on the play. Noel the setback play action look Pearson underneath. His fifth catch of the day gets him back across the line of scrimmage. Mark him down at the 14 yard line. And the apps with fourth down and nine. And we'll see the field goal unit come out for the first time today. Chandler Staten, perfect 11 of 11 on the season. And this spot at the 21 yard line. So a 31 yard attempt. He is one of one from that range this year. 20 of 22 for his career, kicking off left hash. Ready for the snap, good spot, kick on the way, and it is straight through the pipes. Timeout on the field, 8.05 to play third quarter. App State tax on a field goal, 52-14 at the Rock. You get a sense of Rich Rodriguez's frustration today. ULM nearly as productive on their last drive as they were the entire first half, and nearly had about half as much possession time. 10 play 75 yard drive. That's what got ULM on the board. App State is answered with a 31 yard field goal and we sit at 52 14 here at Kid Brewer Stadium. And 31 yard effort by Chandler State and makes him 12 of 12 to start the year. That's the longest streak to begin a season since at least 2000, probably farther back than that. But special teams records aren't kept maybe with the uh, same tenacity as offensive and defensive <laughs> numbers are. And all you kickers and punters out there, you know exactly oh, what I'm talking so about. That is so strategic. You don't want to jinx those guys. Those you guys aren't want to head cases them. at all, right? <laughs> that is funny. You definitely don't want to jinx those guys. And, and uh, he's swinging his leg pretty well and, and putting it through the upright. And uh, you want that to continue because eventually he'll have to win another big ball game like he did at Coastal and like he did at Marshall. Jaya right back out to QB, 5 of 11 in the passing game, 104 yards, one touchdown, a pair of interceptions. One of them went for a pick six on the last play of the first half as Andrew Henry gets the carry. Henry today again bottled up a bit. That's his eighth carry. He's just now approaching the 20-yard mark. So he's averaging less than two yards a carry on the day. And you know, it's interesting, typically by this juncture, he's had the ball 12 to 15 times and he only has carried it eight times a day. So he probably probably hadn't gotten into his cadence or rhythm, but but if he gets going, he, he's, a, he's a back to be reckoned with. Getting behind as early as ULM did changes your play calling philosophy That's a little right. bit if you're Rich Rodriguez as Henry carries again up to the 34 and a half yard line, needed to get the 35 for the first down. So this will be third down and short. 
Today, ULM just two of seven on third down. Part of their productivity here over the last couple of weeks has been better third down play. Pile of bodies. That scrum finally heads over the 35-yard line and then some. And the second effort will give ULM the first down. How about Jaya Wright, the quarterback, just saying, I'll take this. That's that, that wedge block where you get your splits tightened and you just kind of create a V like a, a, a flight of birds. Quarterback gets behind them. They were so productive, they may want to run that as part of their uh, standard offensive package because they, they gained about nine yards on that play. I got to give you props, man. That's max effort on the description going flight of birds. As Henry carries to the 43-yard line. You've had some good ones well, in you your you know time. how birds get in the V-shape. I know what you're talking leads, about. And then the other one takes it to the lead, and that's kind of what that blocking uh, formation looks like. So that's what we used to run in Pop Warner football. People are going to be walking on greenways all across America, and they're going to see a flight of birds go by and say, I see it now. I see the lead blocker. They, they just by probably, a beak. They probably just know I like chicken. So. <laughs> Like I'm thinking about a bird. No, I'm just kidding. Second down and nine coming up. Ball at the 44-yard line of ULM territory, trying to get over the crest of midfield here with about 6'10 to play in the third quarter. Right with plenty of time. Best blocking for him and pass pro all day long, and he tries to run out of that. We'll get to the 47-yard line. Had great blocking, just nowhere to throw it. App State covered it up well great, downfield. Great secondary coverage, zone coverage, great great coverage in the secondary. But also a smarter move by Wright. You know, in the first half, he would have thrown into a, a tough situation. That time, he, he used his feet to manufacture some, some yards and, 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 and live to see another down. Five wide on third down and mid-range. Right up the middle, has the first down, and then some bouncing off tacklers inside the 40-yard line. And finally stopped in that Mountaineer backfield. First down gain for Wright. Ronald Clark comes up and makes the stop, but Wright found the right alleyway to run. As you take a look at it in the replay, he saw a very thin tube to run down and ran down it effectively. Again, that's a great decision on his part. He's not throwing into double coverage. He's not throwing into a tight window that, that's not really open. He's saying, I'm going to run and take what the defense gives us, and, and it's been productive right now. Henry trying to get outside left, and he is taken down by T.D. Ruth, trying to get around that corner. You could make the argument here, and, and Wright getting some time today. Obviously, Chandler Rogers has gotten the bulk of the playing time for the last few weeks. You get Rhett Rodriguez back in a couple of weeks, and he's still got another year on the backside of that. You could make the argument that ULM's got the best roster depth at quarterback, potentially in the entire league, heading into 2022. That's a great way to look at it, Dave Jackson, but you know what? You're, you're being kind. My thought process is the football gods are, are, are looking down on ULM. And I say that because Rhett Rodriguez, who's good at what he does, is going to come back in two weeks. Chandler Rogers was playing out of his mind. So they're going to have to make a tough decision. And now with Chandler not performing as well in this football game as he probably wanted to, uh, Wright coming in, uh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to make give them a quarterback, not controversy, but quarterback uh, competition once all of these guys are back in the fold. And all three guys are capable of leading this offense. Zach Rasmussen on the near first down catch. He picks up nine yards, bring up third down and one. The tight end junior out of Anna, Texas. Touchdowns of back-to-back -back weeks against Georgia State and Liberty as a near first down gain there. Henry will carry over right tackle and finish the job at ULM nearing the App State red zone yet again with just passing now four minutes remaining in the third quarter. ULM is doing a fantastic job with play selection, uh, execution on each play, plus chewing up time on this clock. Again, th they know that this ball game may not be winnable, but they want to make it respectable and continue to build confidence. So they're, 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 their play selection is pretty uh, effective and efficient right now. We'll bobble on the snap, right going to take off down the sideline, pick up about six yards on the play. It looked like he wanted to hand off to Ja'Kyle Holmes, but right making something out of nothing. Busted play turns into a near seven-yard gain on first down. Good job of manufacturing a play here. That ball was snapped low, it hit the turf. He picked it up without obviously, you know, putting his knee down or anything, and just, just manufactured six plays, created six plays for this offense, six yards for this offense. Tenth play of the drive. About 52 yards thus far.
Second and four. Right, quick pass, didn't get enough on it. Had some pressure coming to him as well. Caleb Sperlin, who's got two touchdown catches today, by the way, was in there on the pressure, and that kept the pass well short. That'll bring up third down and four. Again, ULM today much maligned on third down. Good job by Sperlin, and uh, ASU did bring a little pressure. Mar DeMarco Jackson blitz from his middle linebacker spot, putting a little pressure on, on right. Right with five wide, three to the bottom of your screen. Zach Jackson split out wide. He's the farthest down to the bottom, just above the Appalachian State. Right scrambling, in trouble. Throws off his back foot, and that's nearly picked off. It's actually caught by a Mountaineer defender, but sliding out of bounds. Really, I tell you what, uh, he, he tried to, you know, create a, a play there, but really you had two big guys. Again, the port throw, he just tried to get that out of bounds. He was out of the tackle box, so was not uh, worried about intentional grounding. But uh, Jordan Earl and Demetrius Taylor did a fantastic job of trying to corral right in space. All that time, Aries Davis snuck downfield, so an ineligible receiver downfield penalty will be the first time that we've seen the flag fly here in the yeah. second half. And that's tough when you got a scrambling quarterback and a big, big lineman. He's trying to block, and he thinks the quarterback's going to run, as he has the last four or five plays, and you go down the field a little too far. Light rain beginning to fall here again at Kid Brewer Stadium. Kind of on again, off again rain showers, but those fans have been here. In droves today, 2.50 to play, third quarter, right? With third down and nine. Rolling toward that sideline, pushed by DeMarco Jackson into the boundary, short of the first down. The feet went out at the 20. Wright needed to get to the 18-yard line to move the chain, so this will bring up fourth down and a full two, almost three based on the spot. Obviously, it's four down territory. I mean, they're down 52 14. Uh, they feel like they've got some momentum running the football in and somewhat throwing the football, so you know they're going to go for this. But uh, it'll be interesting to see if we bring a little pressure or we play it conservatively with our second level of our defense. Andrew Henry to the right of Jaya Wright in the backfield. ULM will check to a new play clock rolling inside, 2.15 to play in the third quarter. Fourth down play coming up. Wright rolling out to his right. Throws, catch made. Is it inbounds or no? Yes, they're going to call that a catch inside the five. Call it out at the three. First down ULM. I believe that was Sparks on the catch. Wow, that's that was a good good job on that 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 short out by Sparks. There. Correction, that was Wiley. Wiley, oh, he ran a great route. That's that quick out and uh, good throw by by uh, right there. Second catch for Darian Wiley on the day. His last one was a touchdown. First and goal, ULM. Andrew Henry trying to sneak up the middle, and the App State defense peels him back. Caleb Sperlin, DeMarco Jackson, also Jayla McLeod in on the stop. If they put the ball in the end zone, they will have outscored ASU 14-3 in this third quarter for a team that was down 49-7. That is just really, really good uh, productivity, you know, uh, for the, uh, for the for, uh, University of Louisiana Monroe. Henry right side trying to hop a tackler. McLeod gets on his back and rides him down at the two-yard line. So a pickup of one will bring up third down and two full yards, four down territory here. ULM's already converted one-fourth down on the drive as we go inside a minute left here in the third. Big Jordan Earl and, and, and Caleb Sperlin and Demetrius Taylor tightening up in the middle there, doing a good job of getting a little penetration to, to stop the run. Boogie Knight splitting out wide top of the screen. Watch him, he's been kind of quiet today offensively. Third down and the run play up the middle <laughs> is a touchdown. Abraham Alsee into the end zone. And ULM puts points on the board just before the end of the third quarter. That's, that's, that's a bowling ball rolling because he's six foot, 250 pounds, and he runs uh, like the running back for Seattle. What's the guy's name uh, who likes the Skittles? I uh, cannot think of his name right now, but he, he runs low and runs reckless. And, 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 again, just good job getting in the end zone. 
Second touchdown for Alsi. He had a touchdown against Liberty as well. Dave Marshawn Lynch is who I'm thinking about. I mean, that's who he reminds me of running the ball because he just runs. He runs like he's angry. So Alsi gets in from two yards out. Sutherland's PAT is up and good, and we have a timeout on the field as we show you Abraham Alsi right across the goal line. Who wants to tackle that guy? That's a Let big him man in. running the football, and he runs, he runs hard. Twice as much offense than they did the entire first half. 26 plays, 160 yards, a couple of touchdowns, 52-21 our score right now is you look at Terry Bowden, a guy who uh, has had a job or two. He said, you know, he, he wanted to know what it was going to be like to get back into coaching again. So he spoke to Dick Vermeil. He went up and saw Coach Vermeil and, and said, you know, I got this TV gig. You know, he's doing the analyst gig. What's it going to take for me to get back in it full time? What do I need to know? And after having that conversation, he knew that he wanted to coach football, said he was happy at ULM. He, it said, he said it was the first time that he's had a job that he wasn't automatically looking for the next job. And I thought that was a very honest assessment because we all know coaches by nature never really like to settle too much. They always have their eyes on the prize. And uh, Terry Bowden saying, you know, I've been there, done that. I just want to coach football now. And ULM is a place that he can have success despite the score as it is right now. There's some juice down in Monroe. They've got two more wins to get bowl eligibility and they've got plenty of opportunity to do that over the next four games, no matter what happens the rest of the way here in Boone. The Thomas Hennigan getting a little distance for App State in the kickoff return and Chase Bryce going up top. Watch Jalen Virgil with the rolling catch. They're gonna say no catch. No catch, waved off, said he trapped it on the rolling grab wow. around the 20. Let's check it again. You be the judge. That's what's so great about bringing these games to your screen. You get to again, watch. Gets behind the deepest DB at that ball no, touches the, the ground. So great call. And you know those were those referees only have a few seconds to make a decision, but great call. But but good throw, good play selection because again it tells the Warhawks defense that, that Appalachian is going to continue to play and, and continue to keep them on their toes. So good great great play call there. Chase Bryce has had two three hundred yard games in his last three. He's nearing that again as Mountaineers will go with the ground attack this time. Peoples on the carry. Mountaineers rushing the football for 169 in the air for 256 overall, 425 total yards of offense as we see this third quarter, the the third quarter come to an end. 52-21. We are headed to quarter number four here at Kid Brewer Stadium on kind of a cool rainy Saturday. Homecoming going the way of the home team. We'll see if App State can finish it off when we come back. There he is, the Intimidator, Sean Clark, head coach of the App State football team. His squad up 52-21 to start this fourth quarter of play. Clark bearing down on win number 16 in his coaching tenure. App State will achieve bowl eligibility with a win today, although we, we asked, we said, how much is that celebrated? And like, eh, not so much. Six wins isn't going to get the job done around these parts, so we'll be happy with that. We know we're going to postseason play, but there is more that is wanted out of this program as Chase Bryce misfires on third and long. Fourth down, and we'll see Xavier Sabach come on to punt for just the second time today. Sabach had a 44-yarder earlier. He will punt from just outside his own 20-yard line. What an about face. This uh, Warhawks offense is about to get the football back. They were 0 for 5 on third down uh, in the first half, and they are 6 of 12 now again. Just, just... They, they've done a 360 here in this second half playing much better football. See Terry Bowden trying to keep his team coached up. You know, it's a big weekend for the Bowdens. Tommy Bowden back in Memorial Stadium in Clemson for the first time since he left that program as Clemson playing Florida State today honoring Bobby Bowden. That game's a 17-13 game in the fourth quarter, by the way, but uh, 
Terry Bowden, of course, has been part of one of the most famous families in the game. And, and because of that, you know, you get a lot of opportunity to talk to other coaches. And we asked Coach Bowden earlier this week about what his relationship was like with Jerry Moore. And he said, you know, Jerry put a stamp on App State very much like my father did on Florida State, just by the way that he coached and, and had to coach through some up times and down times. And, and the, the town stayed behind the football program. Terry Bowden credits Jerry Moore for a lot of App State's transitional success from FCS to FBS, not leaving the cover bare for Scott Satterfield and company to come in and inherit that transition and ultimately take App State up to this level. You know, his exact words was, uh, Appalachian is a bunch of grinders, and they are a bunch of grinders because of Jerry Moore. This culture knows how to win football games. They do it the blue-collar way. They develop players. And, and, and he just couldn't say enough about Appalachian's uh, player development uh, aspects and the culture of this football team, a football program. I think it's interesting, though. You talk to Terry Bowden for a second, and he sounds just like Jerry Moore. I mean, they are cut <laughs> from the same old-school coaching cloth. Third down and a yard. ULM trying to string out a drive. Alsi had the touchdown earlier. He carries across the 40 as the first down gain for ULM. And you got to admire what Rich Rodriguez and Terry Bowden are doing here. You know, they're down on the road. Uh, things didn't start out incredibly well. Those four first half turnovers play a lot into the storyline of where this game is right now, especially. They're giving some guys who haven't had the chance to showcase quite a bit an opportunity to get some run here in this third and fourth quarter and show a building program what they can be a part of. That plays into recruiting and all kinds of things. Play, plays into recruiting. They've got a bunch of young guys playing here. So, I mean, they're gonna they're building a program, and that's exactly what, 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 what they're saying. Now, whether he meant it or not, but when he said – I, this is the first job that I've had where I'm not looking for the next job. He says, he, you know, he can see himself coaching and finish his career uh, at ULM, and that helps with recruiting. But, but again, he's building a program, and these guys are still fighting. They're young. When you look at their roster, I mean, they're really young. they got guys that will be back, and so they're going to be good for the next couple years if they can maintain uh, the guys that they have. Second down and five right on the keep. Just across midfield, it'll be a yard shy. Brings up third down and one. You know, speaking back to that, that whole Coach Bowden legacy uh, amongst them all, Tommy, of course, the late Bobby and uh, Terry here at ULM. Remember back the first home game that ULM had, uh, Bobby Bowden was scheduled to attend that football game before he fell ill and eventually passed away over the summer. And Deion Sanders was coaching opposite Terry Bowden in that game, and the two of them had a moment after the game was over where Dion was able to reflect on what Bobby meant to him and having an opportunity to share with Barry in, in that unique circumstance. Listening to the We're Talking podcast, Nick White, who's the voice of ULM, said that, that Bobby and family had full plans to come to ULM uh, and be a part of that before, un unfortunately, that situation took a turn and he lost his battle with cancer. But... Uh, Football is a small world. Avery. It's a I mean, small they, all world. All of these the people Bowden, are so interconnected. The Bowden family, that's a, that's a tight-knit family. I mean, wh where else can you say a Bowden won Coach of the Year back-to-back, -back and it wasn't just Bobby. It was, that's it was right. you know, in, in two, was, it, was that 2000? Uh, the old uh, Bowden Bowls. Uh, yeah, that was, I, want, I can't remember the years, but Tommy won it, then Bob, Bobby won it, and, and uh, you know, these guys, wherever they've been, they've been successful, and that just says a lot about how he raised his sons and how he raised his family. Boogie Knight was the intended target on that last pass play. He was thrown over by Wright, but Boogie Knight, one of two players on this roster that followed Terry Bowden with him to ULM. We've got a timeout on the field. 52-21, App State on top. Welcome back to Kid Brewer Stadium. David Jackson, Avery Hall with you. The diehards are left here. It is raw out here, I gotta tell you. It's about 44 degrees. There's a light rain falling. The wind's been kicking up every once in a while. But the students, they are not giving up just yet. This is the start of Halloween weekend here in the high country, and they are dressing up as the fans that are left for the fourth quarter of this 52-21 ball game between App State and ULM as Mountaineers getting some Fresh legs of Nate Noel in there on first down. App State took over on downs after Jaya Wright failed to convert on a fourth down play. And here's Noel getting up close to 100 yards on the day. Good to see Hoosman in the football game uh, calling calling the plays and, and running, running the offense. And uh, Nate's just doing what he does, uh, what he has done all day, and just finding the seam in that stretch zone block and scheme. 
in uh, creating, creating yards after contact. Jacob Huseman off to Noel again. Look at him go, staying on his feet inside the 10 yard line. I'm pretty sure he stiff armed somebody then had to step over him for the first down game. He, he has great vision, but look, watch this good vision to pop it and get it outside. And then you, you're not going to bring him down because he has great balance. Look at it. It stays on his feet. He's loaded to the ground anyway and just does a good job of restarting and, and, and picking up his, his, his speed and getting more yards there. 16, uh, 16 carries, 125 yards for Noel, and he'll polish it off with the touchdown run. Nate Noel from seven yards out. The Mountaineers tack on another score here in the fourth quarter. Again, that, that's just the Nate Noel show. Again, great, great vision, great balance. Uh, I mean, he, 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 he didn't get tackled. One guy didn't bring him down, and he, he got multiple yards on those three carries after contact. <laughs> <laughs> Three plays, 50 yards, all of them Nate Noel run plays as he will likely finish his day. 17 carries, 132 yards, and a touchdown. You know, Appalachians had nine, I guess what, uh, uh, nine straight 1,000-yard rushers. And he, he's if anybody's going to get there, Nate will have to get there this year. Nate Noel. Doing it all himself here in the fourth quarter as the Mountaineers make it a 59-21 affair at the Rock. 59-21, App State on top of ULM. Sean Clark, he's a Mountaineer traditionalist. He's pointing out the bugler's dream on the on the kickoff. He knows, he remembers from his, his playing days. That's one of those, boy, you can get some alums fired up if you don't play bugler's dream on the kickoff. They go crazy. Just ask Alex Johnson all about it. Kick off away as ULM's going to try to get a spark here in special teams. Boogie Knight, that's not a good idea. He's up to about the 14-yard line. He gives up nine yards coming out of the end zone there. As uh, you think about where all of this start, yeah, yeah, he's like, eh. Let's go. He, yeah, Let's he pause go. there. You can yeah. never pause. You if can you pause, pause. You're, 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 you're in trouble because, again, uh, that just sets you up for, for, for not as many yards there. Now, ULM has, has been here. It seems like we were, we were talking with a few of their staff members earlier about every time they come here, it's always rainy and cold. <laughs> but uh, you think back to that 2014 game about where App State started their, their Sun Belt dominance, and it really came in a game on a similar night here against ULM. 31-29 win, Bentley Critcher with a game-winning field goal, less than 30 seconds to play as Jaya Wright takes off. He's out across the 30-yard line, has enough for a first down. Actually, that ball pops loose, and now all the running momentum going to Holmes. He's down the sideline. He's going to score that one for a ULM touchdown. What a fortuitous bounce. Uh, it, it, that was just perfect. It's like he pitched it to him. How about Ja'Kyle Holmes? At a Ponchatoula, taking it all the way back there on the long touchdown run for the Warhawks. I mean, if you if we get a replay, that ball again, Wright does a fantastic job of trying to get as much as he possibly can. Probably got a little greedy, which you know helped with the with the takeaway by the defender. But uh, just just a, a a lucky bounce. I, it, it's like he pitched it to him. And we do have uh, you, you, Appalachian does have. Sutherland's PAT good. Let's watch this again. He's running down the field again. He, he, he's trying to create some, some yards to make a play. That ball just bounces right to the Warhawk. How about Ja'Kyle Holmes? Right place, right time to pay dirt. ULM on the board in the fourth quarter. You know, ordinarily when you see somebody with a covering on their face like that, that's usually fan distress. You know the old, you put a bag on your head, but when you put a, a pumpkin on your head the day before Halloween, that just means you're into it. He is into it, and he's excited about not only tomorrow, but it's going to be a fun night in Boone, North Carolina, the way this football is, team has played. So. I tell you what, that's taking the face coverings of the COVID era to a new extreme. <laughs> have stayed on the kickoff return out across the 25-yard line. How about crazy play? Ja'Kyle Holmes in for the touchdown, the first of... His tenure at ULM. And we'll see what App State does to counter in a 59-28 game. It's one of those plays that 
statistically, I, I just kind of geek out over this stuff because Jaya Wright actually gets credit for 18 of those yards, and then it turns into a fumble return that is a 68-yard score for Ja'Kyle Holmes because of the nature of the play, because the ball did come loose. It was a live ball on the ground. Holmes picked it up in stride, like Avery said, took it to the house. But that's not just one, one running play. So Jacob Huseman remains on for App State as the Mountaineers will battle here with just under 10 minutes to play up 59-28. We've seen a few odd bounces in this game. Seen some pinpoint accuracy from Chase Bryce in the passing game here today as well. 20 of 30 for his day as the Mountaineers will start to work into the two deep here a bit in terms of running backs and new skilled players. Jameer Smith getting his first carry of the day. The graduate student out of Notre Dame. 11 carries, 42 yards in his Mountaineer tenure at 30 yards against Georgia State, his top game in black and gold thus far a few weeks ago. Got a few, uh, you know, the, the, the second uh, lineup on a depth chart lineman, and, and, but they're still doing a good job, Dave, of, of, of trying to do, run that, that zone blocking scheme and trying to knock the big fellas of uh, Louisiana Monroe off the ball, which is a tall task. Smith on the carry again. Runs right into a host of linebackers. Travion Webster, man, we have said his name a pile of times today. He was in there on the stop. Webster credited with five total tackles now. Jabari Johnson, the leading tackler for ULM with eight stops. Trey Cobb has led the way for all tacklers with 12. I tell you what, uh, he, he, he's able to run and run freely because they've got big... Uh, Zill Lee in there. He's 6'7", almost 315 pounds, number 99. You can see him standing there towering over folks. But uh, they've got some big guys up front, and they're doing a good job of, of getting, you know, penetration right now and allowing those linebackers to just run and flow freely. Third down and six. Look like the Mountaineers jumped, and that is indeed the case. False start. Offense. It's Cameron number Wells. 16. Five-yard penalty. Third down. Wells on the jump there, Christian Wells rather. Sophomore out of Fort Lauderdale. You know, so that'll back up, up third down and 11 from their own 25. You, you know, uh, Wells is probably getting a little excited, uh, but you know we're probably going to run the football maybe, and uh, you hate when a receiver just kind of gets a little in a hurry. And maybe, maybe we're going to throw. Maybe he knew something we didn't know. <laughs> Haven't been a ton of penalties in this game uh, after that first half. We saw a few early on, but they've let him go here in the second half at least. As we see the carry up the middle there by Jameer Smith. That'll take us inside eight minutes to go and bring up fourth down. Smith got about four yards back. So Sabach will come on for his third punt of the day. We're talking earlier about App State's success in the Sun Belt, and they have certainly taken off from joining the league, 28 and four, about to be 29 and four in league games here at Kid Brewer Stadium. But that all really got started against ULM. In 2014, App State went through a three week gauntlet of ULM, Arkansas State, and the Raging Cajuns down in Lafayette. And they won all three games. And they were not three games that App State was heavily favored in. False I think. start, kicking team, number 28. Five yard penalty, fourth down. Five yard penalty backs him up further, but ULM fans can, can attest to this because here recently ULM has been heavy underdogs in several games in a row and they've won two of those games back to back weeks. Well, App State was in a similar situation their first year in the Sun Belt going up against the perennial contenders within the league. This was a year removed from ULM beating Wake Forest down in Winston-Salem. Didn't exactly predict success in that trio of games, but a close game that came down to a field goal here at Kid Brewer Stadium started that run. App State would beat Arkansas State on the road, beat Louisiana on the road, and really never look back in Sunbelt play from that, po uh, that point. That was a transitional season. App was not eligible for bowl competition because they were finishing their two-year transition, but finished seven and five that year. They would have been bowl eligible had that been available. They actually applied for a waiver and did not get that there were there were too many teams not enough spots that year and, and that was still that was impressive because back then uh lafayette they were they were good you you just mentioned ulm was pretty talented arkansas state was very good and yep. so to go through that that gauntlet of teams was, was very impressive back then 
Jaya Wright a little bit more traditionally this time, handing the ball off to Ja'Kyle Holmes. I mean, Holmes you, didn't you catch mean this one off the just bounce. Bounce no, it to him, and no. he catches it in stride and runs for, as you said, a 68-yard touchdown. He only got three yards this time instead of 68. <laughs> How about that? It's kind of like he couldn't have drawn that play up better. I mean, fumble the ball and it pops right into his. Uh, hand. It did have a feel of a backyard draw it up in the sand type play. From the 41 second down at seven. Right, fake the toss. He's got some room to run across midfield as the first down picks up about nine yards on the play. I tell you what, you look at the, the numbers here on right for today. Jaya, seven of 15 in the passing game, 136. He had the two interceptions in the first half. Touchdown here in the second. He's also run for 86 yards. Well, this this offense, Rich Rodriguez, if you're going to be successful in this offense, I, I feel like you have to have to run the football. You know, when we were talking to this uh, ULM offensive staff, they even talked about Chandler Rogers. They compared him to Patrick White of right. West Virginia. So, so when they were talking about the offense and talking about explosive plays, talking about moving the chains and, and converting on third downs, they were talking about having a quarterback that can create opportunities and move the chains, whether with his feet or with his arm. And so they've got three quarterbacks that can run the football and throw the football second down and five from the Mountaineer 45 about five and a half minutes to play flags flying all over the place ULM Lyman stood firm there looks like we'll get a free play here it's discipline but going back into that Pat White comparison Offside. defense number 48 in the neutral zone at the time of the snap five yard penalty results in the first down it's Kyle Olson today's Sunbelt official on the play here. Take a look at this from earlier today. Military flyover as part of the homecoming festivities and a little homecoming element to that as the pilot of one of those planes was Chris Alessandria, former App State baseball player. Had 11 home runs in two seasons, playing a little left field for the Mountaineers. And had the opportunity to fly over. They just recognized the trio of folks that made all that happen on the field here just a few moments ago so kind of a cool way to see homecoming get started with two jets flying low cover over boone why not cool cool in so many ways one he he, he played here at appalachian he he served the you know the community well played hard for the baseball team and now he's serving our country and uh and uh and, and, and we just were grateful for his service and and his contributions to to our country now five wide Right connects on the boundary. First down catch for Kobe Cavill, freshman out of Cedar Hill, Texas. A six yard touchdown catch against Georgia State earlier this year. He moves the football inside the 25 yard line for a ULM first down. We're under four and a half minutes to go. 59 28 the score. Dave, if, if Coach Bowden can keep the nucleus of this team together on the offensive line, defensive line, uh, linebackers, running backs, because these everybody's young or has another year. He's, he's going to have a great uh, year next year. I'm not writing this year off, but they still got a chance to make a, a, a bowl game, but they're going to be really good in the future if he can maintain, keep, fo keep folks out of the transfer portal. Jaya Wright, five-yard pickup to the 20. You're talking about those Pat White comparisons, Avery. I, I remember at that same time when Pat White was playing at West Virginia, and Rich Rodriguez even said, hate to saddle Chandler Rogers with this kind of comparison, but it's the kind of comparison that people will understand. I remember that same player was being used as a way to describe Armani Edwards playing quarterback at Appalachian State. It was the run-pass threat similar style of being able to kind of slice and dice both ways and and jerry moore would say it almost the same way he's like i hate to compare him to pat white but and that was the exact kind of language that we heard out of rich rodriguez and terry bowden talking about chandler rogers unfortunately today not his day rogers two of five in the passing game he ended up running for 26 yards but jaya wright has hit the century mark 19 carries 100 yards and the touchdown to go with 153 in the air he is been the reason why the Warhawks have made this a respectable ball game here in the second half. And again, that says a lot about coaching and culture. Again, I hate to be redundant around that, but think about it. This guy's sitting on, on the sidelines, not sure if he's going to play because Chandler, Chandler Rogers is playing very, very well. He's not Chandler doesn't play well today. He steps in and next man up. He 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 answers the bell. He answers the bell today. Right fakes to Alsi trying to keep his feet. Has the first down gain on third and short and gets inside the Mountaineer 10 yard line. Clock rolling inside 2:40 to go. Again, App State will 
get to bowl eligibility. They'll win their 47th homecoming game, and that's the 62nd edition of homecoming here at Kid Brewer Stadium. A few of those played across the street, but you get the point. All good times, though, here at good Kid Brewer Stadium. Hey, hey, DJ, you know, every time I watch this offense and they continue to just churn and grind, as we've talked about, I can't help but 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 hearing Coach Bowden during our call with him this week just saying, listen, our players will not quit. We're going to compete for 40, for 60 minutes. And, and, and oh, by the way, you know, we, we know we're going to take our lumps, but we're going to compete. And that's what his guys are doing. And, and I'm telling you, what happens when you have guys who compete and they care about each other, it translates to more victories down the road. Rich Rod said, play the next play, keep it simple. And that's what ULM has done today. Near a touchdown grab over on the sideline to Will Derrick. Derrick's been a guy that's been targeted an awful lot. He's a first down threat. That's the first time that he has been targeted in the second half, at least. I right, bring up second and goal, or third and goal rather from the two. So Derek just about got in there. App State trying to use some of those second teamers and bow up here, trying to keep ULM out of the end zone in the final 144. Alsey with a full head of steam across the goal line for the touchdown. Abraham Alsey might be the surest bet inside five yards to get into pay dirt that you've got in the Sun Belt he, he right now. He fumbled the football. He fumbled the football. So that that's going to, again, he was running hard, but that's what happens when you run. I mean, you, he, he's running really hard, and, and, and they just punched that ball out. Uh, but 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 he was running hard. Good, good defensive play there. They're going to say that ball got punched out before he broke the plane. Rolling on the field is a fumble recovered by the defense. First down, Appalachian State. And the Mountaineers got it back. That was Ronald Clark that came out of the end zone with it. Doesn't look like there's going to be a replay review. The show it, again. It, it looks like, I mean, you're not really going to be able to tell if he broke the plane, but look here. He, that ball is out. out across. It's, yeah. it's out. That ball is out. The ball of the never yard. got into the end zone. That's right. That's right. Good heads up play by the defense there. Well, I stand by it. Abraham, I'll see it. It's a sure bet inside the five. He's just got to hold on to the ball. As App State will come out of their own end zone, and that defense did get the opportunity to bow their back as Anderson Castle will make the carry. Timeout, Louisiana Monroe. Their first charge timeout of the half. Wow. Third second timeout. Wow. Fans here at the Rock feel like they've already got their value out of their ticket price today and didn't appreciate the game being stopped. Anderson Castle, though, getting a carry. That's his 19th carry, his high school program here in the Boone area, won their conference championship last night. Been a big football weekend here in the high country. Big football weekend for the Watauga Pioneers, but also too, he represents the program well. He runs hard, uh, he, he has good balance, good vision, and uh, the, he, he, I've not seen him go down with uh, with first contact or one defender bring him down. So he's, he's a good representative of, 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 of the Watauga Pioneers here in Watauga County in Boone, North Carolina. Terry Bowden there a moment ago. He's got his team on the road again next week at Texas State. Four of the last five away from Malone Stadium for the Warhawks. Mountaineers on the road next week as well. They'll be at Arkansas State before closing out with two of their last three here in Boone. Huseman gets the pass play out across the 10 yard line. That's Eli Wilson, the tight end with the grab. and. That's Jacob Huseman getting a pass completion. That's that's Coach Sean Clark saying to Coach Bowden, if you'll call a timeout with a minute 25, I'm going to throw the football being up 59-28. <laughs> that's that's that, that chess with coaches there, you know. First and 10 Mountaineers. You know, but Bowden called that timeout because he, he wants his team to believe that we're in it and, and we think we can get the ball back and put some more points on the board. And off goes to Castle. He runs so hard. That's a hard runner right there. To the 24-yard line, nearly gets the full 10 yards on first down. They'll spot him at the 22, and we'll call that second down and one. Inside a minute to go here in the fourth quarter. App State will win their second consecutive ball game, move to six and two, so bowl eligibility for yet another Sunbelt Conference team. Mountaineers will maintain their hold on the 
Sunbelt East lead. Of course, having the tiebreaker over Coastal thanks to that 30 to 27 win a week ago Wednesday. ULM will fall back to an even four and four in league action, two and three in the league, heading to Texas State next week. Another pass play for Hughesman on the boundary there. That's Christian Wells on the catch. And that's a first down game for the black and gold. Stops the clock with 30 seconds left in the ball game. I tell you, you know, you can't say about the Warhawks, they, 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 look, they're going to lose this football game. But this is a different team that went that went 0 and 10 and 0 and 7 in the Sun Belt last year. This team is going to compete and fight, and they're going to be in a lot of ball games over the balance of the season because of the resiliency and the fight that they have. Great, great, great showing by the Appalachian today. They just they came out and played good football in the first half, being up 49-7. Ball bounced their way with turnovers and just 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 a good overall performance today. Look at Anderson Castle up to the 40-yard line. That's a gain of 11 and another Mountaineer first down. 15 seconds to play. Clock will, should have stopped to move the chains, but that's going to be it. Both teams heading toward the middle of the field, and this one is over. Homecoming 2021, a success for the Mountaineers of Appalachian State, a 59-28 victory over ULM here in Sunbelt Conference play. Avery Hall, your final thoughts? Just, you know what, just a good football game by the Mountaineers. They were able to be on the other side of turnovers, which made a huge difference in the score in this football game, made a huge difference in the number of possessions and the scoring opportunities. You know what, I can say UL Monroe, they, they've got a lot to be proud of, and they've got a lot to work on and, and build on. So, you know, kudos to their program as well. Mountaineers with 511 yards of total offense on the day to 311 for ULM. Again, App State getting their sixth win. Bowl eligible are the Mountaineers as they move to 6-2 and two on the season while ULM drops to 4-4. Four and four. That's going to do it for us from Kid Brewer Stadium for our analyst Avery Hall and our entire ESPN crew. Remember, all archives available on the ESPN app. This has been a presentation of ESPN. App State wins it 59-28 at the Rock. Good night from Boone, everybody.